trying this out. This is actually pretty good. Like the first sip, I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to like this, but this is actually pretty good. What's what the percentage it? on it? Uh, it tastes high. Let me, uh, <laughs> cause I had three before I started and I was like, uh, oh, shit. I might, might want to slow down. <laughs> Where's the percentage on here? Uh, okay, we it's, now. it's, it's nine, <laughs> it's nine percent. Well, oh so my like, god! I, better, yeah, I was like, I better watch how many of these I drink. You're not going to yeah. remember this interview. No, it, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're live. Welcome to From the Ground Up podcast. Today, well, a few things to get out of the way. I already messed it up. PortCityPythons.com. We have some animals available. Um, we do have some animals left over that we did not sell at the show, so... We still have some animals available, as well as T-shirts. And then, as far as what else we got to talk about, we have Amazon links down in the description. Also, did you see on Instagram someone in Australia was wearing a shirt? No, did we send a shirt to Australia? I didn't realize we did, <laughs> but I posted on our story, and I forgot to tell you. Yeah, someone in Australia was like. Doing this, this, and this, and wrapping the best or wearing the best like reptile podcast t shirt. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. So, okay, thank you. Cool. And I'm sorry that I missed out. And I didn't, I don't know. I, I got have... the notification. Your phone's weird about notifications. Yeah, I'll but I thought I would have seen the address and been like, oh, damn, this is going to, to Australia. Australia. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. But if anyone else wants a shirt, <laughs> you can be like the guy in Australia. You can be like Australians. That's awesome. Yes. Um, like you said, Amazon links. We still have some snakes available, even though it is getting cold here and very difficult to ship out. Um, okay, I think that is it. Other than that, today we have on Ryan Rumbly of Rumbly Reptiles. So Ryan works with, right now he's working with a bunch of Borneo short tails. So we'll definitely get into that. But Ryan, if you could give us a little intro on your uh, reptile keeping experiences and kind of how you got started yeah sure i uh i grew up in florida originally uh my mom's from maryland so that that'll play a part in the, the story later on but uh grew up in florida always always was into snakes probably just like any other you know die in the wool snake keeper and uh my first snake was actually a yellow rat snake that i caught at my uh my dad's hunting camp and it was like a you know five foot snake. And the, the funny thing about it is when I caught it, it's I was walking through the pine trees and uh, my friend in front of me let a branch like swing back to hit me in the face just because you know that's what we do when we're kids and we, well as adults too. <laughs> and, uh, I thought it was the pine needles that hit me in the head, but what it was is there was a yellow rat snake in that in that tree. And when he let the branch go, the snake actually bit me in the head. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and I pulled it off and I was like, but, uh, you know, I love snakes. I was like, this is, this is amazing. So, uh, you know, I pried this animal off my, you know, off my skull. And I was like, wow, this is so awesome. So, but anyway, that was my first snake. But uh, my first reptile, at first my mom was like, you know, no snakes. You know, when I was a kid, you know, I got my first uh, reptile. I think it was, it was either 88 or 89. I was like eight or nine years old. The Before the Daytona show was in Daytona, it was in Orlando. It used to be at the, uh, God, what was that? I think it was like Sun, the Sun Bank or something or Holiday Inn. And uh, she took me there and I got a leopard gecko. And she wanted me to prove to her that I could take care of this animal. And a year later... You know, she was like, okay, no, no snakes yet, but she's like, okay, um, you know, you can get more if you want, cause you've done a good job. So I bought a, I went to the next Orlando show and I got a, uh, like two Pac-Man frogs and I got a green basilisk, which you don't see anymore, <laughs> which sucks cause those things are so awesome. But, uh, yeah, that was one of my, uh, God, the phone keeps dropping. Um, so I got a, I got a green bottom, like my first reptile. It's funny. You don't see those anymore. And probably most newer keepers would be like, what the hell is that? You know, it's, and it's, it's not that, exactly the best. Uh, the water. There you go. It's not exactly yeah. the best 10 gallon tank type of pet, but I think no, everyone no, kept it in those back then. <laughs> well, yeah. And you know, what was awesome is like, I had, uh, you know, it, it ended up being a male, which was even cooler. Cause you know, it had the big sail on the back and the big, you know, the big head piece coming off the back of the head. And, uh, I kept it in like a 50 gallon 
tank, but I had like, you know, tree limbs and all kinds of stuff in there. And what I used to do is I put a, uh, I had a crock bowl and one, I, I, and even then I fed it a varied diet, you know, just as a kid, cause I used to read I, and I still do as an adult, like I read constantly about stuff cause I want to know like everything I possibly could. So I was varying the diet, but what I do is I'd go down to the, uh, the uh, bait store and I'd get minnows and I put minnows in its water bowl and it would, and I put one of its like wooden perches, like tours, like right above the water bowl. This thing would like climb up to the top and actually dive head first into it. <laughs> and like, it, it would sit there like motionless. And then like when a minnow got like run underneath it, it would snatch it up. And I was like, I thought that was the coolest thing. But, um, I, I wasn't actually allowed to keep snakes until I was 11. And that's when, uh, you know, I had that, I brought the yellow rat snake home. And my mom saw I was taking good care of these lizards and the frogs. And she's like, okay. And she's like, you know, but I was always obsessed with Burmese pythons back then. And she's like, nothing over nine foot. So she let me keep the yellow rat snake. Went to the Daytona show in 91, or no, it was still Orlando. And I got a boa, a carpet python, and a ball python. Wow. And the ball, and I, it's funny because like the coast, the, the coastal carpet I bought was a Queensland coastal <laughs> i think i got it from tom crutchfield but uh um and it's funny because i actually bred that snake later on when i was 17 but uh it it's just it's just uh it's cool how like just eventually she let me have snakes but that's how i got a uh, you know it took a while and i didn't i actually did bring burmese into the house later on when i was 14 and she that was still a rule don't bring anything big in you're giving her a run for her money. She was trying yeah, to be nice. Yeah, I mean, she's like, don't bring him in. But, like, I always did so well with him. That <laughs> she just was like, okay, well, I, I trust you. And, uh, you know, so even when I brought the, the berms home, I mean, she was pissed. But she was like, all right, well, I'm going to let this – I'm going to see how it goes. Because, you know, back then and still, like, today, you know, they talked about, you know, everybody thought Burmese pythons are, like, 18, 19, 20 foot. And, like, most of them, a big female, like, most of them are 13 or 14 feet. That's still a really big snake. But, I, you know, I've seen, I don't even know how many berms over the years. And I think I've seen one legit almost 19 footer. And that's after see that's that's seeing tons. You know, like somebody will have like a huge one at a show or whatever, but it's probably 14, maybe 15 foot. But uh, anyway, mom, since mom's from Maryland, this is where it gets into the real cool part. Uh, it was the summer, I think, of like 92 or 93. We're up in Maryland. And a friend of my mom's is like, oh, you know, a friend, uh, a girl that sh comes to my store used to date a guy that owns snakes. Um, you know, maybe he would let Ryan come over. And, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, because they're working this out for me to go over there with my mom, and my grandma. And I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be the, the, a dude with like some corn snakes or like maybe <laughs> some boas or ball pythons in his basement. But that's cool to me because like you'll find out like as we talk, like I like everything. Like I, I like all snakes. It doesn't matter. Um, but I, that's what I was thinking he was going to keep, like maybe some boas, maybe some corn snakes or something. And, you know, it would have been cool to me regardless. It ended up being Peter Call and we go over there and I walk down to this basement, you know, and, and like, I freak out, like, and I still do. Um, but like, as a kid, I was like, just freaking out because I go in there and, you know, he's got, you know, that's albino boas. Like he just produced albinos, but no one had ever seen albino boas before. And like, he had albino boas and he had chondros and Brazilian rainbows and blood pythons and retex. He had all this cool stuff. And I was like, wow, you know, that was the first time I ever, you know, been to a, a breeder's house and like got to see a collection. And the funny thing is in, in 96, we actually moved to Maryland and I ended up working for Pete for a little while. Wow. Yeah. And, and world. I actually worked, I worked for him two different times. I worked for him a little bit in uh saw, you know, when I was 16, but then, you know, high school and sports and everything got in the way. And then I ended up working for him for about a year after high school. So like 99 to 2000. And that was, uh, that was a cool experience. Is there, yeah. is there anything in particular? Because like Peter calls, not exactly, at least at this point, not exactly a guy who's in the public eye pretty much at all. From what I understand. I mean, yeah. is there anything that you learned from him, his collection or what you did that yeah. like kind of stick stuck with you? 
What, what one thing that was like super cool about like being able to work for Pete and everything, you got to like see how big breeders were. Like, you know, I don't think people realize how many snakes people like Pete and Kevin and Bob Clark and those guys that the, the main names, I don't think people realize how many animals they actually have because everybody that knows who Pete is knows that he has like, you know, tons of boas and, and ball pythons, but you know, Pete's not even really into ball pythons. You know, he was into pides cause that's what he got, you know, and he was the first one to make those, but you know, Pete didn't breed any other ball python stuff for years because he only like pies. He's a boa guy and he likes other, you know, other stuff. God, phone keeps slipping. <laughs> it's it's funny to watch it slowly. Like, yeah. yeah. For people so who weird. are listening on the recording, his phone is slowly tipping over. <laughs> yeah. It just kind of slowly like slides towards me. But um, one awesome thing about like, okay, when I worked there, like the, the last, you know, year and a half or whatever from 99 to 2000, like Pete had one room and it just had chondros and emerald tree boas in it, but nobody would know that. And then the very back room of the building, he had Bolin's pythons. Wow. Yeah. And like nobody, I mean, well, I mean, there's plenty of people that like, you know, there's always the like inner circles and all that, that know that you have certain things, but like most people probably didn't know that Pete had Bolin's pythons and like, man, you know, and then I, and that's how I met my buddy, Ted Thompson, um, you know, you, if you don't know Ted right now, you'll probably get to know him being up there now. Cause he's always at all the Hamburg shows and everything, but working with, um, just messing around with those Bolin's pythons. Like, I mean, those, if they, if you can re reproduce those things like at all, yeah, I know there's a few guys and I think Keith McPeak's probably going to be the guy to like really start cracking them in the U S I, you know, and I know Mark Spataro, who's a friend with friends with Pete, you know, I know he's reproduced them, but it's like, man, if, if those could start being reproduced at any, you know, just even a couple clutches a year, because like anybody that has, has ever handled like an, a Bolins, like an adult, I mean, I mean, they're just, they're amazing. Uh, I mean, they're, they're like a giant jungle carpet, but, but chill. <laughs> you know they're, they won't tear your face off but i mean like bolins are just so chill but in and, and they're huge i mean i I don't know what his biggest one was it was probably like eight foot eight and a half i'm a bad judge of like how big snakes are but it you know it's probably eight footer and you know her head was as big as your hand and it just like and it being super chill and like iridescent and, you know it's that black and white black and yellow is just man that's a snake that like maybe in the retirement years, man, I might give it a, you know, I hopefully by then people are breeding them, but and reproducing them, but I wouldn't mind giving a, giving a crack at those. Yeah. Either way, that's kind of an animal that you invest for the love of the animal. And oh, if absolutely. you ever, it would be like a, uh, almost if it lets you breed, it would be like obviously an <laughs> honor <laughs> uh, if it lets you breed it. Well, and you have like a really amazing snake funds account. Because yeah. like I would totally go after a man, but they, I think it, I think now they're up to like almost eight grand a pair, and I'm just like I don't have that. And it, and the thing is, we usually put money into snakes, expecting a return. In Bolins, you got to know that you're pretty much flushing that do down the yeah. toilet most of the time. Yeah, it, yeah it's done. <laughs> yeah, you you drop eight grand on them, and then it, it's pretty much, you know, you you really wanted that pair of Bolins pythons. That's pretty much it. But uh. I don't know. It was, it was, you know, I learned a lot about, I mainly worked with the boas when I worked for Pete and uh, that was a lot of fun. Cause I was always into, it's kind of funny. Like I started off with bigger snakes and then I, even, even though I, I do have a lot of Borneos and stuff, I, but I worked my way down to smaller stuff. Cause like now, even though I have like two retics and you know, when a berm and a couple boas, it's like when I handle like a really big snake, I'm like, why the fuck do I still have these? These are such a pain in the ass. Like, I don't know how ivory does it. Like with all those retics, like I do not want any part of that. That, that, oh my God, they're such a pain in the ass. So like those big snakes, I just want no, I mean, and I actually, I bought the white motley that um, Melissa was holding at the Arlington show. 
Mm-hmm. When you were like, oh, you're talking about it. She's like, oh, we're not buying this. <laughs> I actually <laughs> bought that snake and uh, I named her Sugar, which I don't really name my snakes, but she has a name. Um, and she's actually awesome, but she's she's eight foot already. And I don't. And and that's I don't why we didn't buy them. Yeah, and I don't pound her. I don't. I don't pound any of my snakes with food. She just like grew like a weed. And I I couldn't imagine if I fed her like you know like a hardcore retic breeder, like just pounding them with food. I couldn't imagine how big she'd be right now. Yeah, we probably saw. Her, I mean, last NERBC, maybe it was eight months ago. It was like you know a baby, maybe two two and a half feet or something. Mm-hmm. That's why well, it was. It was September. It was a September 2017 show. Oh shit! So it's actually so it's been a, just over a year. Over yeah. A year. Yeah, but I mean, she's like, she's eight foot, you know, she's actually just, she could probably start to eat small rabbits because like she can eat jumbo rats already, but I just feed her, you know, every seven to 10 to 14 days. Like I don't know, I don't write down uh, feedings anymore. I used to do all that stuff, but you know, like, you know, at one point, which I'm sure we'll get into later, I had over 400 snakes and that was a pain in the ass. I, I just like, I got so sick of it. And when I had tons and tons of clear birds, I was feeding them a little more often. And I was like, dude, I'm so sick of writing down like all this stuff. And, uh, you know, so now I just kind of feed them. And I'm sure I think most of my stuff probably gets fed every 10 days, every two weeks. If I really kept track of it. I mean, I do the same thing with my pythons and stuff. Cause I don't care if they breed, yeah. but yeah. I, they're like yeah. maintenance all the time. But... <laughs> But was so seeing that giant bull and I mean that didn't really get you into big snakes or anything like that. Like how did you get from working with Peter Call with boas and stuff and get into colubrids? Well, the the funny thing is, is about me is like because I like everything. I mean, like, you know, it can be dry marcon, it can be corn snakes. I mean, everything is cool to me. I just have to try to focus, which is a problem. But mm-hmm. you know, Borneos are they make it easier for me because they're my favorite. But the colubrid thing is like, I, you know, I bred some colubrids when I was younger, um, you know, like Mexican black Kings, Splendida, I bred yellow rats, um, you know, a, a handful of stuff. So I already had had a little bit of experience with that, but for the longest time, it was just big snakes. I actually met a guy, um, Bill Babcock a couple years ago who I met through my friend, Julie, and, you know, he was like, well, hey, you know, he wanted to start sending me colubrids to breed for him. And I was like, okay. You know, <laughs> before he started sending me like tons and tons and tons and tons. And we already had some corn snakes and stuff. The wife loves corn snakes. I do too. Um, you know, she, like one of her first things she bought was a salmon snow motley from uh, the shores. And uh, he was amazing. You know, she actually, she, she hit me up she, one day. She was like, baby, you can sell my corn snakes if you want. I was like, are you serious? And she's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. But uh, anyway, working for him, he he started sending me Hondurans and the Black Eye and Pyros and Zanata and Alterna. Had tons wow. and tons of Alterna. Yeah, I don't even know how many Alterna I had at one point. I mean, and did six. you have to get all those feeding? Because I mean, it seems like he's sending you the pain in the ass animals. <laughs> well, well, yeah, oh yeah. Well, <laughs> and the Black Eye, from what I experienced aren't bad as far as like a mountain king they're not too bad usually if they don't take frozen like usually you can get them on live every now and then you know you'll have a a picky one but they're not too bad um pyros all the ones i got were already established now when i hatched pyros i actually got lucky i did the boiling the pinky trick frozen thawed ones people listening not live (laughs) like and it was leah williams who actually told me to do that because i was like what She's like, boil the pinkies. I was like, that sounds stupid. Like, why would I do that? And why would it work? But it did. And it actually worked with some of the Alterna. But, um, you know, I already got, he sent me a group of adults that he already had, Alterna-wise. And then he bought some other adults when they'd pop up. And then, you know, I think the only ones I got that, he he got actually got a bunch of those long blotches. Remember when you had Jason Nelson, Jason Nelson, right? Yeah, he had Jason Nelson on, and he's talking about those long blotch uh, Alterna. Yep. Bill bought like I think twelve of those, 
And sometimes, yeah, I know <laughs> it was tons. Like they never came at like ones or twos. It was like a dozen or 18. Where and, was he finding all these? I don't even know. Uh, anyone has such oh a large... Well, well th this was a couple years ago, you know, before the Chinese like really started dipping into the Kluvert market, gotcha. um, you know, because like they just, I think they take half of our animals at least. From talking, and, just talking to Jason, it seems like just an outrageous number of animals. Like, oh, oh, it's insane. At and least it, it half, used, yeah. It, it used to be the Japanese with um, everything, and they still do by, God, this is going to piss me off. Um, <laughs> it used to be the Japanese that would like come and you just open up a briefcase at a show and be like, I'll, you know, I'll buy your whole table. You know, of course, everybody's going to be like, okay. You know, because right? it's not even, whole, it's not even wholesale. Money. You know, like Brett, Bom Brett Baumgartner, he sold like his whole table at Daytona once, like on a side, like it opened up and I don't remember what Japanese guys it was, but they you know, just walked up and they bought his entire table of hognos. And I'm like, God, why can't that happen to me? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> It'd be amazing. I was like, yes, take them all paper or plastic. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh my God. Cause you know, they don't like, and it's not wholesale though. Just, I mean, you give them a little bit of a deal, but like from what I've seen with those deals working for like Pete in particular, I mean, you cut them a little bit of a deal because they're buying thousands and thousands of dollars, but I mean, they're not paying wholesale, you know, as it's you just a mentioned. different market over there. There's so much oh, less. Supply, oh, it's insane. So. Yeah. It, it, but I mean, they're just like, I mean, man, like now it's nuts. Like, you know, I've been buying some colubrids, you know, here and there just like just a half. Cause I have to have at least a few colubrids. Um, I can't be colubrid lists. You know, I always have, I always <laughs> I like have some, that well, I always have some whole brook eye and, you know, and, you know, obsoletus, the, the, you know, the black rats and the speckleds, but they're, they're local every now and then somebody will give me a Caligaster and I'll be like, Oh yeah, sweet. And I'll be geeking out over, you know, regular Prairie King, someone found in the bushes, but like, I think it's awesome. But, um, back, back when he was sending me all that, like the, the Chinese weren't really dipping into, the colubrid market. So they, I mean, they weren't, they still weren't easy to find, but you know, and then building the rapport with the breeder, you know, guys like Richard Shreve and, you know, uh, Jonelle Lopez and those guys, like when you, when you talk to them and like, you know, and, and they know you're serious and you're going to get them, you know, they, they want to keep these snakes in the U S I mean, they're, they're going to make their sales, but like, you know, if they have a U.S. breeder, that's going to, you know, buy, you know, a dozen or more, or whatever, you know, most U.S. breeders, they'd love to keep them around because like the ball python thing, I think the reason a lot of non-ball python people, why it comes off on hate is uh, because that's like when you go to a show, that's mostly what you see. I think most snake people like actually, I mean, if you, if you really ask them, like, I think most of them would actually, you know, they would say they really like ball pythons. But the problem is, like, people like me is I, I like them a lot. But, like, I don't like when I go to a show, especially, you know, that I've been in this so long. It it sucks because I go to a show and I remember how awesome they were back when they had, like, you know, a plethora of species. And you see, like, everything. That's when it sucks. And, you know, even looking for simple stuff like colubrids now... Oh my God, you can't find freaking colubrids at a show. And that's nuts. Like, I've never seen anything like it. Like, I'll go to a show thinking like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, there'll be a couple vendors with cow kings and Splendida and corns and other stuff. Not even corn snakes. Yeah. Like, that's insane to me. Like, you go to a show and like, you barely see any corn snakes. Like, It's crazy nuts. because the demand is there too. Like, now yeah. the demand is there, which is awesome but i mean there's yeah no one keeping up with it because like you said i mean they're not there's not many it's, people it's, selling onesies and twosies it's sending out hundreds to, onesies and twosies. To you know, and, and you know what and from breeding all those colubrids and having tons of them i understand fully why those guys do that like i mean i think steve roy lance so like on one of his podcasts said he produces like five thousand baby corns a year i'd kill myself that sounds like, so oh my I, think it's, so like, I think it's double that now Oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah. Cause that was like four years ago when he said that. So like, Oh my God. So if the Chinese is like, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll buy 1500 or something. I'll be like, Oh yeah. I mean, I, cause I wouldn't want to take care of like, it's just, yeah, it's baby the, yeah, it's pretty, pretty obvious that that's a, that's a good move for like 
every reason. Oh I God. Mean, yeah. There, there isn't a bad reason, you know, with that. I mean, I would do that instantly, especially if I had those numbers, yeah. you know, and like Jason selling his, all his pits overseas or a lot of them. I don't blame him. You know, especially, you know, like when you take care of tons and tons of baby snakes, especially colubrids, you know, I have somebody come up and be like, you know, say you have 200 in your inventory and someone wants to buy a hundred of them up, oh, especially if it's not like wholesale, if someone actually wants to pay you or like at least 75% of the price of the babies, if they buy enough of them, I'll do that. You know, I don't want to wholesale them because especially like with colubrids, like I would turn those guys down all the time like reptiles by Mac and some of the bigger breeders like Amir. Cause you know, Amir, I know a lot of people know Amir is a you know ball Python guy, but Amir, I think owns it snakes at sunset or something. No, but he, you know, uh, well, I know he's at least in uh, control of Ben Siegel reptiles at the moment from what uh, I understand. Well, I mean, cause yeah, cause Amir would come to your table at, when shows end and he would, you know, offer to buy stuff, but like those guys would come up and like they, not, not those guys in particular, not like Amir, yeah. but I'm just saying like guys in particular would come up to your table and you'd have like, you'd have some stuff left and they'd want to like buy like all your colubrids for nothing. Yeah. And I'm like, no, nah, dude, no. I mean, I would never do that because like, even though I didn't really want to, the stress of taking back home 50 snakes or whatever it was, I was not going to like give away the stuff that like I busted my ass to produce and feed and everything else, because, you know, like even the Getchua Kings, some of them you have to really screw with to get them to start eating. You know, I mean, I didn't realize that before I started really breeding King snakes, but I mean, some of those things are a pain in the ass to get going. And like, if you breed, um, like I had some locality corn snakes, like Polk County, Florida corns. When I hatched those guys out, you know, and most of the baby corn snakes I'd hatched out over the years didn't give me many problems. Those sucked because they were F2s. They wanted to eat yeah. the knolls and they were a pain in the ass. But like I sold those so fast, you know, because I had, you know, proof that they, you know, where they came from and everything else. And I mean, and they were amazing. I, I'm trying to remember which one it was. I think it was the male almost looked like a blood red, almost like a poor man's blood red. But I mean, like he was just wild caught. Um, you know, Polk County, Florida corn snake, you know, and people, people love that. I yeah. mean, you, if you go on morph market right now and you try to look for normal, anything, anything, even ball pythons, boas, retics, anything, it, I mean, they will be like 10. Yeah. It's insane. Uh, this may be a naive question, but why is the Asian market only interested in colubrids? Well, um, I can tell you this because uh, my military background, like I've been to Japan and Korea, is a lot of those people live in apartments and because the government actually has a sanction to where they can only build up, uh, you know, so much because they're trying to keep, you know, their, their resources, like their, you know, their natural resources. So a lot of those people live in apartments. So if I was to guess the main reason they do colubrids and ball pythons, smaller stuff is because of the space mm. and that would just be my guess um you know because like you see the indos like the you know the, the thailand and malaysians and all those you know that are catching like they have like bloods and retics and berms and but that's what they have and they're not constricted the same way what i've just noticed from at least korea and japan and i'm sure china's the same way because of how populated they are i'm sure most of them live in apartments too so, I mean, because you can fit, you know, like a hundred colubrids along the one wall, depending on how big it is, you know, if you keep them in like 32 quarts or so. Now, when you were breeding uh, colubrids in numbers, were you in Texas? No, 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 no. I've, I've actually never been in Texas. I'm in Arkansas. Oh, shit. Then what, how are you always hanging out around Texas? It's only five you just hour come drive, down? man. <laughs> only five hour drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd be, you know, for, well, for the, the big show, you know, I would drive down to Texas twice a year for inner BC. I'm not driving down for Repticon, you know, Dallas or some crap, you know, I like every now and every now and then I'll vend a smaller show, but like, I usually don't because like the, it's probably why I never really had a reptile business. Cause I just, <laughs> people ask me the stupidest shit and it's so hard for me not to say be a dick and, and then like i mean not like a dick but like sarcastic because you know what they say at the it, like at those shows 
I mean, you meet tons of great people, but like you have the ones that come up and they just say the random stuff and you're just like, uh, all right, dude. <laughs> Speaking of Texas, someone named Carpet Cartel said, boo, who the fuck is this? Oh. Also, some some little little hobbit man said, fuck Dan Magano. So. Oh, well, that's true. I mean, fuck Dan Magano, <laughs> but like whoever Carpet Cartel is, I mean, I don't I don't really hang out with uh, fruit fly breeders. <laughs> so, that's what I heard. He, the, he's the fruit fly cartel. <laughs> yeah. So, so did you... I mean, even in Arkansas, breeding all those mm. colubrids, I mean, it was a pain in the ass for us in Texas to get, mm. you know, formation down and everything. So, like, what were you doing for that in a warmer climate? I would, before I turned my garage into the actual snake room, I'd put them out there in November. And it, whatever the temperatures got is whatever they got. Uh, I would take black, uh, the big giant black uh, contractor trash bags, and I'd cover the front of the rack. And then, oh. yeah, and, and I learned that just by, you know, looking what other guys would do. A lot of them, like, will cover them with uh, thick blankets and or, you know, trash bags, something like that. Just, to, you know, because the darkness, in my opinion, plays a big role, just like the temperature. And besides the Hondurans and, like, the Getula Kings, like the Floridas and the Easterns, the Floridas, the Easterns, and then the Hondurans, like I actually had the heat on. Well, I would turn the heat on depending on how cold it was, but I'd only set it to like 65 because sometimes it would get 20 degrees out there. And I would actually brewmate young Mountain Kings and Alterna too because I wanted – I didn't do that with like Cow Kings and stuff like that, but I did it with like that other stuff. And a lot of times I put them out there and they hadn't even fed and I would brumate them. But then as soon as they came out of brumation, they would, they were starting. They're ready to go. Like, you know, what a pinky <laughs> looks good now, doesn't it, fucker? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, yeah, you're going to eat now. But, um, you know, but it, it, I mean, snakes are tough, especially the, our North American stuff. I mean, I know a lot of people freak out like, oh, man, I can't get them down to 50. It's like, dude, they're, they're tough snakes, man. I mean, as long as they have fresh water, I mean, they, they can take a lot. Now, did you find that those those mountain kings did they do okay as far as keeping them like your other snakes? Were they uh, susceptible to high temps and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. That that's that's one thing with them is uh, because I had two rooms. Well, actually, I had several because I had them in the dining room and shit. And like, oh yeah, the, the wife loved that because yeah, I had gauge eye to the the uh, black milks before they were a bazillion dollars. Um, you know, and I had them in the dining room. And then in my other dining room, I had Asian rats. You know, that's where I kept all my porphyracea and mandarins and stuff. But in the main colubrid room where I kept like all the, like the Getula Kings and all that other stuff is I put all that, uh, all like the Nablocci and the Pyros and the Zanata and all that. I put even not so much the gray bands. I mean, they're, they're super tough snakes. I would put them towards the bottom. So they were usually 77 to 80 ambient but like i never let that room go over 80 degrees ever and i just put those certain snakes lower in the racks with no heat tape or anything you know that's just the way i kept them and then they they did fine um the asian rats i didn't even uh i had i mean i had beauty snakes in another in another room the tenera i had them in another room but i kept them lower with no heat just like um just like the other colubrids but like all the Asian rat snakes, the smaller stuff, cocci and latticinctus and stuff, I kept them in that other dining room and they never got over like 75 degrees because mm. like those snakes, like heat will kill them. So, well, I mean, snakes in general, I mean, you know, everybody worries about cold. Heat is what bothers me. Like even my pythons and stuff, I think my hot spots, you know, even the non short tails, it's like 86 degrees. Because I notice anytime I, you know, especially like younger days and even, you know, the last couple of years, if I gave any snake too hot of a hot spot, they never used it. Mm -hmm. they, they, you know, they're, they're looking for that mid eighties to low eighties temp and that's it. I mean, they're, they're not, they don't want to be roasting. 
I mean, it, unless it's like a gravid female or a snake that just ate, most of them are away from the heat. And that's all species, not just like short tails and stuff. They just, they want to know part of it. And, you know, like the Asian, Asian rats in particular, man, you are the mountain Kings. You keep them too hot. I mean, you'll kill them quick. I mean, they'll go downhill fast. Mm -hmm. So that you, that's a big no, no. You'll kill those things real quick. Did you always lean towards keeping ambient as far as colubrids go? Um, most, most colubrids, but I kept Getchua Kings, like the, the Floridas and the Easterns and stuff like that in my deserts. I kept all those with a hot spot, but it was like 84. So it'd be like 78, 77 on one side of the tub and it'd be like 84 max. I never kept them like very hot. Did you have I... like reasoning behind that? As far as, cause, cause I keep mine ambient. I want to know, am I <laughs> fucking something up? That's basically what... <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I believe there's so many ways like that old saying, you know, there's so many ways to skin a cat, but like, there's so many ways to do this and have success. I mean, there's short tail keepers. Like I know that Keith back in the day when Keith was doing short tails, you know, and Keith's one of the godfathers of blood and short tail pythons. I mean, he did ambient and that, that works great, but I'm just, for the most part, I'm more of the school of thought of, I like to give snakes the choice, but I've kept plenty of stuff on ambient and they did fine. But a lot of stuff, I do give them a hot spot just in case they want it, but it's just not very hot, you know, cause I've just never noticed the only Python species or species I've kept that I noticed that really liked it. Like a nice hot, hot spot is berms, hmm. you know, like I'd keep, I'd give them like a 92 degree hot spot and they well, would use it. Damn. That sounds so, I don't, I know nothing yeah. about them, but that sounds so hot. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I, I always kept like when I kept berms, cause I, I never had respiratory infections with my berms. But I never let my, uh, they never got like super fat. I took them out a lot. So they got plenty of exercise. And, you know, back then, you know, I was a kid. So I wasn't buying no, you know, Neodesha or Vision cages because I couldn't afford that. So I was building eight foot by four foot by two foot cages. So they had plenty of room to stretch out and they just would be able to, you know, choose their temps. But, you know, they were, they would use that hotspot. But anything else, you know, like retics, they don't want, I mean, my experience, I'm not a retic person. I mean, I think they're cool snakes, but, um, you know, I have two, but I don't keep them super hot. I keep them like everything else and they're fine. Now with the berms in particular, I mean, I've heard so many stories about how easy they are to keep, but then again, how susceptible they are to things like respiratory and stuff like I, that. I, I think a lot of that is because they, they get too fat and they have, sh they get like no exercise, you know, and that's because what I've noticed is a lot of big snake keepers. I'm sure you guys. We're catching your drift. What, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to say it, you know, because a, a lot of those guys are my friends and I, I love those guys uh, and they're great people. Uh, but I think most of the herp world knows without me saying it, but anyway, you know, a lot of those berms that get the respiratories, they're fat as shit. They're, they're fat and they're smashed in like a six foot by three foot cage. And their, their lung actually has a, the trachea is in the middle. So like, yeah, they might clear out one side, but I mean, they need to be able to stretch out and clear that lung out. You know, just like short tails. I mean, you know, they, when they put like, they're very vocal. I know you guys have Curtis. Um, they're just very vocal, you know, when they push that air out and it comes out through those tiny little nostrils. Well, if the snake is always squished in a, in a donut and like never moves because like you have like room for the snake to coil up in the water bowl. And then like, you know, these snakes are disgusting. Like when they piss, it's gallons. Well, if you don't clean their cage and they're laying in that and then they, they're smashed in a ball and they can't move, well, they're just breathing all that in. And they're not getting any exercise. It's just yeah, like yeah, who wants to breathe in their piss? Yeah, and they don't have any yeah. choice but to sit in it for the most yeah. part. Well, and like they, babies you know, who sit in their piss. <laughs> yeah, I mean you know, and they just you, you keep them clean, give them plenty of space. I mean, my friend Alicia has a huge albino berm, but she's in an eight foot by four foot cage, 
that snake is in good shape. Um, you know, a lot of times you can tell by the head size, if it's proportionate to the animal, there's nothing worse than seeing a big fat bow or a python with a tiny head or a king snake with no neck. I mean, it just, it's like, I know some, people, I know some friends that like the way they feed their colubrids, I'll get them and it's like this thick as a rainbow bow. And I'm like, uh, and you see the tail and it like, looks like a little it, stinger. It looks like yeah, it, well, yeah, it, it, the snake has cankles and it's like, yeah. dude, that's ridiculous. I was like, what do you, I mean, just, you know, maybe cut back the meals or if you like feeding snakes, maybe get a few more so you can enjoy the experience more instead of killing your snake with food. But, uh, anyway I, I don't know so I, anyone who actually likes problems. feeding snakes does uh, anyone actually really enjoy feeding well snakes? i think you oh, do yes. until you get oh, 100 yeah. of them no there's plenty of, well the type that do usually have like six and they're all berms and a hundred gallon tank and they go down to you know the flea market and buy a handful of adult live rabbits and they're like oh man i can't wait to feed this <laughs> and uh you know so that that is a, definitely a thing that was never like i never enjoyed that i just like snakes more than other animals so it's like well sucks to be you you know i'm gonna feed you to my snake but you know i never like enjoyed it and i you know i don't really get that facet but some people you know people keep snakes for different reasons you know that if, if you're a die in the wool type you know, like me and, you know, Kara and, the, you know, hand, you know, just, you, you can always tell like a real true snake person. It's like, man, it's just, it's just, I don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's just, it's hard to explain, but you can tell when someone's like a hardcore, you know, snake person. And what, I don't know. It's hard because you, you seem so pretentious sometimes. Cause even, even at reptile shows, there's a lot of guys there and there's really only like a handful of of dudes who you're like, yeah, you're you're the real deal to a certain degree. And like, oh. there's so many people who run businesses in air quotes. Are you bringing this up because of this weekend? Is uh, that why you're bringing no, it up? No, 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 it's totally fine. Let's do it. Because I'll probably agree with. No, no I'm not going to tell. I didn't know if that was in reference to that, or is no, that well, something yeah, else? that's part of it. But you know, there's just. There's a lot of people in this hobby and, and newer people don't know how to recognize that the real deal from not the real deal, if you know what I mean. So it's like they, they, once you they, find people that you are on the same plane with, you automatically are like, oh, yeah, we're on the same team. And it's <laughs> oh, like, you absolutely. yeah, I mean, you're you're in the same. You're like, oh, God, thank God. Yeah, you can actually come over here. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I actually wanted to print off like a bunch of the giant, like the biggest Facebook thumbs I could find and like print it off to where the font takes up almost like the whole page. So when people say something dumb to me, I just hand them that sheet. <laughs> I'm like, here you go, buddy. Like, that's cool. You know, because like I actually have, like I found that I, I went on Google, I just typed in like Facebook thumb and I found the biggest one I could. And I saved it. So like when I get a stupid email on Morph Market or whatever, like when somebody sends me like their zip code, I just email them back and it's a giant thumb. <laughs> I, mean, I, I'm a, I mean, I'm 38, man. Like, I don't give a fuck. I, you know, if do you if, if you just send me the zip code, like you obviously don't care that care that much about this animal. So I'm not I would Agreed. rather piss you off and you hate me than sell you my snake that you're either going to sell a year later or kill. So I would rather just send you a giant thumb. Someone came say. up to me this weekend and said, <laughs> "What's your special?" And I was like, I looked at the list. I didn't know what that meant. No, that's oh, not man. what he said. He what said, what's the best people? you can do? No, he said something about a special first. And then he, and then I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, what's the best you can do on this? Oh my, oh and Joe was like, well, <laughs> I wrote that shit in Sharpie, bitch. So it's like, not, that's not the best I can it. do. Like my, that, oh don't God. start the conversation off that way. Like when, when, don't when, come when, up and the first thing you say is say what's the best you can do. My, like, my, my wife, <laughs> Because we've been together going on six years and like she knows me so well. And like when we're at a show and those kind of people come up, she, she'll look at me and I'll kind of look at her in the corner and she'll be like, no, no, <laughs> please don't. And I'm like, come on. And she's like, no. It's like, okay, okay. 
and and it was a vendor. It wasn't like it was someone walking around the show. It was a vendor. No, no, those are the worst ones. They'll come up to you and like because they're a vendor. I breed, you know, ball pythons or retics. You know, probably do, but you know, (laughs) like, oh, I I breed I breed retics. Like, oh, that's fabulous. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, it was just very frustrating. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know what? It is as time goes on, because you know, like when you guys like trust me, like when you get closer to forty, <laughs> if you've been breeding snakes, like if you keep breeding this and doing this oh year God. after year after year after year, you're gonna be such a dick. The so, fucks you know, given are so less. Uh, so. No, there, there, there's none. There, there's none. <laughs> I mean, you know, like my favorite people that come to my table is a super passionate and excited kid. I love a super, you know, just like super excited child that like knows, like they've done research and look at it. And I was like, wow, you're smarter than this handful of fucking retards that are over here, you know? Um, And then like, and if they want to hold the snake, I will let that kid hold that snake. And I would literally let that kid hold the snake. And if some, you know, dumbass adult comes up and be like, hey, Mike, can I hold it? I'd be like, no, no, it's good. It's going back in right in their face. I don't care. Yeah, and I think 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 that's good, though, because you're obviously displaying a balance because we all, at least coming up, you're talking to trying to talk to someone and they're so Mm -hmm. callous that they're turned off to pretty much anyone asking them anything. The the one group that I would never that I'm never mean to is children, because I remember when I was a kid and how excited I would to go to Eugene Bissett's or Pete calls before I even knew Pete and, you know, like those guys tables and have them talk to me, Tom Crutchfield, you know, like those guys talk to me and, you know, kind of nurture like my passion, my love, Mm -hmm. you know, that, that meant the world to me. So like when I see a kid like come up like that, and if they say scientific name, oh, it's over. I'll give that kid that fucking snake. <laughs> I will give that kid that snake. I'd be like, did you just call that an alterna? Oh, kid, pick whichever one you want, man. You can have it. I'd, I'd give it. I would give that child that snake. I mean, like there was a like there was a kid that came up to me, and it was an Oklahoma show, and uh, he wanted a, this particular corn. I don't remember what it was. It was like sixty bucks. He had like fifteen bucks. But he was wearing a Pantera shirt, and he was actually pretty cool. I was like, here you go, kid. And he was like, for real, man? I was like, yeah, just take it. I don't give a shit. And he was like, all right. And then, like, some adult was standing there. He's like, oh, man, you give shit away? I was like, nope. Just to that kid right there. And he, uh, the guy looked at me kind of pissed. <laughs> Whatever, man. If you want one, <laughs> 60 bucks. <laughs> I'll give it to that kid, though. The kid was cool. You know, that's just I – mean, because, like, you'll remember that. You know, in life, you remember – the things you remember the most, it's not the common day stuff. It's, you know, what was really awesome and what really sucked. That's usually what you remember. And if like, you're really into snakes or you're getting into them and like some, you know, adult vendor either cut you a big deal or, you know, gave you an animal that you were really geeking out over, man, that means a lot. So, and I think that's why I do it. um, I was just talking to someone in the chat uh, and they asked us how we thought about the show. And I was telling them one of the great things being corn snake breeders is that we get to connect with so many kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would you say at least half the we people are, who came to the table were kids, yeah. if not three, four. And I mentioned like we're one of the only people who could confidently tell the truth and sell a good pet to a very young kid because just corn snakes are, you know, Abs- corn absolutely, man. That that's that's one of the coolest things about like you guys breeding corns and when you start breeding the other clue birds too. Uh, you get such a varied audience of of people and the kids coming up, especially because, you know, a lot of those, they, you know, the kid can actually afford, you know, that's one thing. Another thing with ball pythons, it's not a bad thing. It's just what you see. Well, when you go to a show to buy a snake and everything is 500 fucking dollars, well, good God, man. When I was a kid, I couldn't afford that. Bob Cork was, you know, he handed me a tiger retic the whole, and I think I was like 15 and he was like, you know, and I was holding it and enjoying it or whatever. And he, you know, he told me it's like 500 bucks. I was like, oh, I can't buy that snake, <laughs> you know, but he, 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 I guess he thought he was going to, and he would have sold it to me, which, you know, 15 year old Tiger retakes an amazing purchase. But, uh, you know, I didn't go that route. 
<laughs> yeah, that that you know, that's what kind of would suck also with breeding like huge animals is like who do you what 25% of your clientele actually should be buying that snake more than likely. Yeah. More than likely. I mean, you know, in uh, males cuz even male retics, I mean, they get to breeder size, they can be pretty yeah, big unless, they could also be peppermental which is well, kind yeah, of yeah that's what i'm talking about like the, the old chainsaw slashing bite or whatever i mean but you it, okay like snake people like me you know i'm not a retic person but i'm a snake person and i've handled snakes forever so like having a couple retics is no big deal to me and understanding snake body language but like if you never had one and you don't listen to someone like ryan telling you what to do you know because like out of all the snakes that ryan sells to people I mean, there's probably a handful like myself and a few others that are going to listen to what he's saying and do what he's suggesting. Keep him in I'd a routine. To him. Look at his yeah. Facebook. I'd fucking listen to him. Well, no, no, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I mean, the main reason that I love Ryan so much is because he's a dick. I mean, I, I love it. But, but you understand, though, because it's hard. You know, like when I look at people, you know, like, you know, Kara and Matt you know, at least in the short tail world. I mean, Matt, just looking at Matt, if you just based it off personal appearance, you wouldn't think that he's such a nice, friendly dude if you were stereotyping, you know, because he's a bigger guy, you know. Got beard. Tattoos, Philly people aren't known beard. for being exactly nice. Well, in Philadelphia, yeah. anybody that's watched Eagles games, you know, like when the, you know, when the. They, they booed they, their they, team going into halftime and they oh, were. Yeah, they're like, oh, you suck. We <laughs> hate you. Uh, you know, but like you meet someone like Matt, and he's so friendly and like just engaging that, uh, you know, it's just, it's, but it, it, like I have so much respect for that. And like Kara, like Kara interacts with people so well because like I want to be able to do that. And I tell myself so much. It's like, man, just, you know, because it's not that I think I'm better than anybody. I just don't want to listen to your bullshit. So, like, I just don't have much patience with that crap. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm just, I don't know, man. If you say something dumb, it's kind of like we're in a racquetball court. And I'm like, okay, so I can kind of you know, <laughs> get it back to you. You know, and I mean, because, like, Joe, you're, you're ex-military, right? Yeah. Because you know how, like, in the military, we're just, you embrace the suck. So it's like how, sa who can be the most savage to each other? So, like, when you've been in that lifestyle, where everybody just busts on everybody and it's like not really a big deal. I mean, it might be nowadays because all the, how sensitive people are, but you know, at least back then, like, you know, you'd be, you'd be horrible to people. Like I screw, I, you know, I screw with Magano all the time, but I actually love Dan. But yeah, like it doesn't, I mean. you have a hard time translating that to the being good world. in normal life because you could have, <laughs> you could have really hurt people's feelings pretty quickly. Oh yeah. Well, and I mean, you know, I've had people message me back when I send them a giant thumb and they're like, fuck you, man. And I'm like, well, fuck you. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's, and it's not because I think I'm better than that person. It's like, you said something stupid. I'm not gonna also. I mean, I found out, especially from the military, when someone with experience and in the military, it may be rank, at least depending on who the person is, you take what they say and you do it and you don't really, for me, if someone's asked me yeah. care on a certain animal and I tell them what to do and they don't do it, after that, like, my attention span is only so long for that because I told you exactly what to do and you either follow that's, through with that or you don't fuck with me ever, oh, you know, yeah, like, or you that's, don't keep that's, that's a hundred percent. That's, that's a hundred percent what it is. And I'm like, and we're, we're definitely more like direct because it's like, it's black and white. There's no gray. You know, yeah. if you ask me something and I give you the answers, you know, like, okay, you look on, it happens on Facebook mostly because that's just where you get the format. I'm sure it happens on Instagram, but I'm not on there because I'd you know, kill myself if I had too many like <laughs> social media accounts. But like, you will state every single thing in the ad, everything. But then you will have several people ask you because they don't even have the patience or whatever to read the full paragraph. <laughs> they look at the picture and they're like, oh man, that's pretty. And then they're like, you know, they're like, oh, it, what is it feeding on? Or what is this? Or what is this? It's like, dude, I literally wrote that Just out. said all that. Yes. yes. And it's not like it's, a, and it's not, 
it's not the rewriting it. It's the fact that you are asking me that annoys me because I already stated it. And if you ask most snake breeders or people that, you know, whatever, if they're honest, they will tell you that annoys the fuck out of them. I know. And if you say, lack that attention to detail for the ad, imagine how much you're thinking. A hundred percent. If you can't read a simple thing or you can't do any research, you see it all the time. Like blood pythons are exploding in popularity, mainly because of the morphs, I have no doubt. Um, people will come in there and they'll be like, hey, you know, those ask a, sh they'll shotgun a question out there. And it's like, <sighs> because like with me, even though I still have a bunch of experience, like if there's something I haven't kept, I've already read as much as I possibly could about it because I'm that interested in keeping the animal. Like I've never kept Timor pythons. Well, I would be looking for podcasts or I'd talk to like Chad Gray or other people that keep Timors. I mean, I know enough about them where I'm sure I'd be okay taking care of them, but like I'm, you know, I would do a bunch of research on that. I wouldn't just come on a Facebook group and be like, Hey, you know, I have a lesser male and four normal females that I've bred since back in the day, two years ago, <laughs> you know, can I, <laughs> you see it all. So I know you know what I'm talking about. It's, you know, but they'll just ask and you know what, that's fine. Okay. At least you're asking, but like, I'm like, God, man, did you even try to like find anything yourself? Yeah, sometimes yeah. you just got to send them the old google.com link and it's just so they know where to get it. Well, and what most of the people do, especially in blood pythons, because Kara put all that effort into writing all that down. And it literally, if you put in blood pythons in Google, one of the first things will pop up is her web page. So if you really, you know, in the time you took you to write that Facebook thing, if you just put blood pythons in Google or blood python care, it'll literally, one of the first things that'll pop up will be that stuff that she took time to write out. So what happens is, is a lot of people just send that, they just put that link underneath their question. Nobody answers it, they just send that link. Like, here you go, go find it and read it. Yeah, I mean, I wanna keep on building off of that, you guys but, but we talk can't, because someone's gonna so be like, long. you two whiny motherfuckers. You guys like, can talk about come this Come on, it's not so that long. serious. All you're doing is messing with snakes. Okay, yeah. so, shit, so, how, do, okay. how do you transfer Wait. from, I'll be I'll be right back. Just give me one sec. Oh, I'd have uh, pee too if that's what yeah. you're okay. That's what I'm doing. I'm grabbing another drink. Hold on. We all go do that together. <laughs> all right. Not together, but um, you know what I mean? I'll just stop. Um, well, I can talk about the show. Why can't I hear myself? I want to do a whole different episode. Oh, Joe doesn't want me to talk about the show. He wants us to do a whole separate episode about that. Well, who knows when that's going to happen. But I can give you just a quick little snippet. Um, we did the show. It was pretty good. We did about, uh, we brought about 30 snakes and sold a good percentage of it. But the best thing about the show was just like talking to people and meeting people that had listened to the podcast and who'd watched the YouTube videos and even some people who'd brought snake, bought snakes from us in the past. So all of that was really what made it, you know, such a good experience. And the suckiest thing about it, honestly, was that we want to do more, but we unfortunately don't have enough supply to continue to continue doing more. At least at this local show, the next one isn't till February. And we, I mean, we don't have enough to still have a significant portion by February, but I really do like uh, doing the shows and we since the show we've kind of been going back there and forth go. like how many would we need to produce to, like consistently do shows uh, you guys are true champions like, i don't want to give it up can we split no, no. yeah she's she's cozy so <laughs> so what was your question okay well so you're in arkansas now mm -hmm. where all do you do shows um I haven't done a show in a while, but like I'll do Arlington. Usually I'll vend with my friends uh, at Snake Eyes Exotics, Matt and Anya Littlefield. You know, they mainly breed ball pythons, but they do Angolans and um, they have some some hog nose that every now and then they produce, a, you know, some albino condas and stuff like that. Um, so when I do Arlington, I'll do Arlington usually with them. Um, I have split a table before with my friends, Noble Reptiles, which are in Oklahoma now. Um, 
but I've done Oklahoma shows, which are, God, what are those called? Like cold blooded expos or something like that. Those are actually really good. Usually yeah. I've always done well with those Oklahoma shows. Yeah. And then, uh, every now and then I'll do Repticon in South Haven, Mississippi, you know, <laughs> I mean, I usually do pretty good at those, but like, it's more for entertainment for me. <laughs> uh, that's like, exactly where my brain went. It's like, oh, oh interesting man. individuals I mean, at it, that it, show. It, it is fabulous. I mean, I get so much entertainment out of that show because <laughs> the people that come up and, and like ask you stuff, it's just, it's fantastic for someone like me. Like, I love it to death. It just for that. You'd yeah, probably be best well. off selling uh, deep fried Twinkies or something at that <laughs> oh, show. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man, you make a killing. Just like, well, look what Ivory's selling in tech. He's selling salsa. Nobody cares about the, the blood pythons and the retakes. They, they want to buy the salsa. I give a shit about the, you know, albino citron or whatever the fuck it is. You know, they, they want the salsa. Yeah. So, but. Uh, we like food in the South. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Oh, I know. Trust me. <laughs> So how did you end up in Arkansas? The military. Um, before I got off active duty, this was my last duty station. And then uh, I'm in the guard now, but most of my time was active duty. But I found a good civilian job. And then uh, I went in the guard so I could still get like, you know, my benefits. And I didn't want to throw away all those years. So I just stayed here and I really like it here because it's just so slow and chill that I like it. And uh, it just works out. It just works out good for me. I, I like it. I just like the like the slow moving kind of thing. I mean, I, I would love going to Texas. Like that was a fun weekend, but I was so glad to come home afterwards. You know, this is just... pretty slow. <laughs> well, but I mean, like, no, well, like, it was mainly like the... <laughs> The traffic that would drive me oh, insane. Oh, all true. Like, Dallas isn't. Yeah, Dallas yeah, isn't. That's crazy. that's what I mean by like crazy. Like I would like if I lived in Texas and had to go to work in like that Arlington, Fort Worth, Dallas area. I mean, I swear to God, I'd jump out of my car and just like somebody run over me because like that. Well, I mean, because like okay, so you have the southern retardation of not being able to drive <laughs> mixed with five lanes of traffic. So when you put that together, that's a bad combination. Well, yeah, everyone's like, hey, you go. No, you go. No, you well, go. Well, that's the thing about, like, you live on the East Coast, and you when you live up north, like, you know, because I learned to drive in Maryland. Okay, someone might cut you off, but they get, I mean, they're driving so fast that, yeah, they might cut you off, but they're out of the way. So you can't, you'll be like, oh, but, well, never mind. All right, that's cool. <laughs> you know, in the South, you're just be like, oh, man, you know, let's go get some barbecue, and they'll cut you off and, like, almost hit you. But then they, they'll get in the fast lane. Like, and so they cut you off, and then but they'll drive the speed limit. It's like all those other lanes are for that. Get out of the, get out of the left lane. So anyway, yeah. Uh, so the, the see, I love Dallas traffic wise. The speed limit was seventy in the city. All right, enough about traffic. And guys. everyone, yeah, yeah. Hey, so you want to talk about traffic? <laughs> um, so uh, how would you switch from? I mean, mostly colubrids. How'd you get into Borneos and short tails? Well, well, the thing was, is like, even, you know, back when I was a teenager, you know, I got my first Borneos in 97 when I was 17. Um, I what were those really, animals like compared to now? Uh, I mean, they, like nowadays, just like all of her, you know, herp culture is like, we're, we're spoiled because everything is like, uh, there's so many things that are awesome. You know, so, I mean, personality wise, they weren't bad, but, you know, they, they were just dark, like really dark. They weren't like, you know, like the stuff that like I have now or Frank or Cadge or Matt, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, you weren't seeing any of that. You might see stuff that maybe has some stripes. I think marbles were, I think marbles were around in the late nineties, but you would see stuff like that. But dark, personality wise though, they weren't, mine weren't bad. But, you know, like when I worked for Pete the first time, like he had all Malaysian bloods, which you don't see anymore, but all the, all his bloods sucked. All those things sucked. And Malaysian bloods usually are pretty big too. And I hated dealing with those. He had one wall in his old place that was all, 
it was Brazilian rainbows, Malaysian blood pythons. And I don't remember what else, but like, I used to call that the wall of death. And like, I would always do that room last or that, not that room, that side of the room last, because I was like, I did not want to clean those cages, but and I mean, the rainbows weren't too bad, but like, you know, again, I'm sure if you actually ask someone to be honest, would you like to get bit by an adult Brazilian rainbow? Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. That bite sucks. It hurts. And I didn't think that it would hurt that much till I got bit by a big one. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> that hurt more than I thought. And uh, I mean, cause it feels like a Morelia bite like that. I didn't realize their teeth were so long and, you know, cause they kind of got like that, that ball Python size head ish. And, you know, I didn't realize that their teeth would be that long. And when I got bit by one, I was like, ah okay that's <laughs> that sucked but um but anyway i always had it, it's like i had berms boas random like color birds you know like florida's and splendida mainly but uh then i had like the the, the random trio of borneos so i've always been into bloods and borneos it's just i went um when I first got off active duty and I started building my collection back up, I'd always been into carpets and, you know, ball pythons and boas and stuff like that. So I, you know, I got some of my old boas back that friends had been taking care of for me. So I had boas and then I had some ball pythons and then I had carpet pythons and just the animals I had, you know, I love short tails, but like, I just, I don't know. I, I just didn't have any again. Uh, even back then they were kind of like a, a side thing like now how I have like a handful of cow kings and you know anteresia and stuff like that I love those snakes but I have like you know like five anteresia I don't want any more I mean they're cool and I will breed them one day and they're neat snakes and I've always liked them but I don't want any more I mean the only thing I might get is like a granted spotted female but I have like a pair of spotteds and a trio of children's that's fine I don't want, I don't want pygmies or anything like that, but, um, I don't know. Short tails is just kind of, I don't know. Like, I, I think that every now and then, like if you handle a certain snake, something might click for you and like, you can just like fall head over heels in love for that animal. And I don't remember really what the moment was with Borneos in particular to where they became like my favorite but I just know that like, you know, like when you go to Bill's house for a uh, carpet fest, like my favorite snake is this big super strike with the orange head, you know, and he's got the sickness and all these amazing chondras, but I'm, I'm sitting here playing with the tin and, you know, cream colored, you know, Borneo and everybody's geeking out over the black and blue speckled chondra, which that snake is amazing. You know, that, that snake is amazing, but like, you know, I don't know. It's just hard to explain, you know, if, like, if you ever talk to Kara, you know, like her defining moment is going on the VPI and she was a hardcore, you know, locality boa person and going down to VPI and, you know, Tracy handing her a T a, a beautiful, big adult T positive blood that just, you know, that's what did it for her. I mean, my wife, her favorite snake, you now she loves corn snakes the most and she likes conjures or whatever, but like she likes pinks and purples and all that. So like we had, hypo stripe lavender um lavender sun kissed we had uh salmon snow motley and coral snow we had all that stuff because they were pink and all this and i was taking care of them i used to call it like you know the fruit loop rack you know because i'd be taking care of all my snakes and then i'd like i'm going through this rack of like pink and purple corn snakes and i'm like god can i get some oak teas in here or something but uh oh god i forgot where i was even going with that <laughs> yeah but i mean from, a, from an outsider's perspective that yeah. me holding a blood python a short tail is like mm -hmm. a giant slug i don't yep. understand it Chode it doesn't like, make any it sense it chode. must just click for a certain person <laughs> yeah it doesn't well, make any sense well i i heard dave barker say it before which doesn't really hold true with me because i like all snakes but you know, Dave said that people either like, like the short, thick, you know, short, thick bodied snakes, or they like, like the long skinny ones, which makes sense. Cause like, if you're a colubrid person, you're going to like stuff like, 
obviously colubrids, but then like when you go into pythons, like your collection doesn't surprise me at all. The fact all that like lean. no 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 like yeah. because of you yeah, guys mainly have lean. colubrids. Right. And then like, but your pythons, besides like the Morelia, as like you guys have liasses. That doesn't yeah. surprise me at all. And Antaresia because And I want snakes, Antaresia, yeah. Yeah, and they're similar because they're similar you know, to colubrids. So the fact that you guys have and I want rosy so. boas because those are just colubrids too. I mean, let's be honest. It, well, you know what's funny about that is that people, like, so many people are like, "Oh, rosy boas are so chill." Like, nah, <laughs> rosy boas are dicks. First of all, and like one thing I'll tell you, if if you do end up getting those, if, if you don't already know, when you feed them, don't have the water bowl in there because those those boas for some reason I think just because it doesn't ever rain where they're at they will gorge themselves on water. So if you leave the water bowl in there all the time, they will gorge themselves on that water. And then when they eat, it'll make them regurge. Really? I found that out the hard way because like, I didn't know that I I've had rosy. I've always had like a token rosy boa. Um, but I found that out when I had my whitewater albinos is like, you know, a couple of them would puke and I'm like, dude, what the hell's going on? And I finally started asking and they're like, do you have the water bowl in there all the time? And I was like, yeah, I didn't, you know, of I didn't course. Do anything like I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, hydration, <laughs> water, you know, and they're like, well, if you keep it in there all the time, they'll gorge themselves on water and they'll regurge. I was like, oh, okay. Only with those? So, I, well, that I know of with, you know, the, I guess when I was paying attention, it was just I'd it seemed think... that my albinos regurged. I always had like a random, like San Gabriel mountain. Or, you know, I always had just like the random gray and orange rosy boa as a pet. And I know that mine that I had forever, you know, she never regurged. You know, and when I had a male, he did just like the colubrid thing, even though I didn't brumate him when he got into the winter months, he went off food. Mm. Just like a, you know, he just went dormant. So they're, they're awesome snakes, man. I think you guys would like really, if you got into those, you'd really enjoy them. And I mean, you want to talk about hardcore locality, you know, longitude, latitude, where did you find that, you know, fucking snake? Rosy boas are just right there with Alterna. You're like, yeah. you know, you got Sanderson, Texas. And if it's on that side of the road, it's West Sanderson. If it's on that side of the road, it's East Sanderson. If you breed them together, you're, you're a demon. <laughs> See, yeah. I hate that stuff. And, uh, and that you can stuff get any of the off. looks from... <laughs> Like, like you can get dude, different looks from different localities, dude, but dude, one uh, dude, that dude, mile dude, marker it, shit really it, bugs it, me. Yeah, it, it, it's it's insane. I had a trio of Christmas Mountain, like, because like I'm sure you guys know, like how they actually call they have the Blair's phase and then the Alterna phase, but then some of the Alterna phase have like the crazy like granity speckles all in them. Well, I had a trio of Christmas Mountains that were like that. I got two clutches from them, and like. I got a handful of banded animals, you know, and it's like, okay. And I'd show people and then be like, well, why are those like this? And why are these like this? I was like, I don't freaking know, dude. The shit happens. And uh, like, <laughs> I bred two speckled. Yeah. Here's what they look like. Go through my phone. Like there's mom, there's dad. They're both speckled. Here's a banded one. I don't know. <laughs> and they're like, well, is it a morph? I'm like, no, it's not a fucking morph. It just, it's a variant of the um, snake. I was like, right. It's 75 bucks. You want to know? I'm no, no, I'm just kidding. Like, I actually really do care. It's just like with that kind of stuff, I'm like, it just happens. It's a yeah. natural variant. So that's just, it's just the way it is. I mean, there's no really other way to explain it. I mean, it's not, it, it's banded. I don't know, dude. <laughs> well, other than dude. no one knows. And that's what, no. maybe that's what attracted you to the fucking Borneos, too. Well, and you know what? The thing with them is like, I think a certain way with Borneos. And I would think that probably a lot of people probably wouldn't agree with how I think with them, but like I read you, you, you can't really find polygenics. God, that, it's really, I'm actually getting used to it now. I'm just like, fuck it. What, you know, like Borneos are kind of like the crested geckos of Python, of pythons. And you can't really find polygenic reading in snakes. So I read about polygenics and plants and humans and other stuff. And, you know, cause polygenics is just, it just works really nuts. And like, when you really dive into it and read into it, 
I think a lot of the reason that people will, will think that Borneos will be like a recessive or whatever is like, if you really look at polygenics, like the gene can float around in there, but if it's not bred to like the right thing or whatever, it's not going to pop out. Well, it's, it's, it's explained right there in polygenic reading. Um, I'm the guy, I'm one of the guys that believe that the only Borneo mutation that I believe that's not polygenic is like, you know, the T positive or sunset now that the ball guy has it, but, uh, um, you know, T positives are recessive. Um, I think like super stripe stuff and like stuff like that is more of a incomplete dominant, I guess, but I would think just about any other Borneo mutation is a polygenic and i actually believe that the gray borneos if you look at pictures that like the indo guys post and like uh even the indonesian python book that tracy uh uh wrote her and dave you look at all the variants in the borneos some of those look like curtis some of those look like borneos we have in our racks when you start mixing them around you're gonna have random stuff pop out but if you look at adults Okay, like I'll use like Dan's breedings in particular. Dan has a sideswipe male from Kara and Ryan that his name's spot on. Well, and that's Magano. Just I I don't know what yeah, he yeah, has yeah. in his collection, so I don't even know what he keeps. I just know you guys talk shit about him. Oh yeah, so. yeah. I, I I love Dan. I love fucking with Dan. It's like it's so much fun. Like the whole like all those like those funny pictures. The whole thing is because he posted a bunch of pictures of like himself and. uh like on his page and then on the blood page, if they looked like Sears portrait photos, like him holding a blood pipe on, you know, <laughs> you know, I was like, Oh, no. I was like, I'm going to fuck with him so bad. So I look, I just went on Google and I typed in like Sears portrait photos, like the eighties or something. And I found like that really fucked up picture and I put it in there and I was like, Magano be like this or whatever. And my friend Alexa, uh, Photoshop that to where Dan's face was in all those. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so for like the longest time, I had it as like my cover photo and like my profile picture. And there's been different times where I've actually used a picture of Dan as my profile picture. And like, I've had people message me, they're like, did anybody ever confuse you for Dan Magano? I was like, that is Dan Magano. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, well, you look like him. I was like, no, 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 that's Dan. I was like, we look nothing alike. I was like, that's Dan. I do that to mess with him. Uh, but uh, the, the whole thing with that happened was, and it was years ago when I first met Dan, he bought a certain Borneo from Matt that I was, I was in love with this Borneo. And Dan bought it. I mean, we didn't know each other. He didn't like do it maliciously or whatever. He just bought it because it's a nice fucking snake. I just happened to love that snake. So then it came with, well, I was like, ah, oh, man, fucking Magano. So then I just started like modifying it, like putting hashtags and different stuff. I, you know, after we became friends, I told him I'm going to make like a fuck Magano super strike <laughs> and like all this other stuff. And like, I just kept carrying it on. And, uh, actually over the years, he's probably bought three or four Borneos that like I really wanted. It's, it's so bad that like, not with Dan, just like with people was like, I got to where I wouldn't like or comment on certain pictures of a snake I liked. Because, like, I just had the worst luck to where if I said, oh, man, that's amazing, or oh, man, or put, like, a liker on this, some asshole would buy that freaking snake, and then I'd message him because I'm, you know, friends with all those guys. I'm like, you freaking dick. They're like, what, man? I was like, I wanted that snake. Oh, I didn't know. It's like... <sighs> so that's where all the, the Dan thing came from. But uh, he's a great guy. He's my buddy. I just like to screw with him. I actually have three... Borneos from him, and I'm gonna. Get, um, he's sending me another one here soon, so I'll actually have four Magano Borneos. So I mess with him a lot, but you know we're good. We're good buddies. You know he has a couple Borneos from me. Um, but with them, I just I'm in the belief that they're all like polygenic, because if you look at something even like Tiger, uh, Tiger Coastals, you know that's a, a striped animal, and they got that defined head head pattern of the tiger, that black you know, almost like devil horn kind of thing going on in their head. Well, you can breed a tiger to a normal look at it, like back in the day, like, and if you listen to Merlin Python back, like way back when they're talking about the co-dominant and they're making jokes about it. Well, that's a polygenic thing. But when you bred a tiger, you can breed a tiger to like, a, he, uh, Eric's done it. And he, and he did it to test it. He bred like that super banded albino male of his to like a tiger female, but he got like crazy stripes in there still. Yeah. 
it's not incomplete dominant or dominant. It's just because that gene is so strong that it just, you know, it, like some polygenics, like you would have to like really, really outcross it to really get rid of a get look just because of how it, how strong it is. And I think that's the way with like marbles and everything else. I just, you know, and it, it's hard when people ask me, like people, they came in, can you give me a, a Borneo genetic rundown? And, you know, Matt gets, I mean, Matt gets 10 times the questions I do easily. And, you know, it's, but it's just so hard to explain. And then, you know, my, my thoughts on it are going to be different than, you know, several other guys, I'm sure. Um, I mean, a few people agree with me, but like, you know, so it's, it's hard for me to explain it. Cause it's like, the week, was it recessive? I'm like, no, like, was it? co-dominant i was like well that's not really a thing but you know <laughs> that's i mean you know everybody says that i understand why they say codom because it's easy I, I get it you know that's been around you know even back in the day like i was saying codom and then i looked it up and i was like because people, were, like, now, though. people were like that's wrong and i was like what that's all i ever heard and i started looking it up I was like oh okay yeah that is wrong right. right that's the hard part it's all so many people have ever heard we so can just fix it in I feel like it's more it commonplace for people to accept well, it. Just, it yeah, it just kind of like bled in. It just came out of nowhere. It's like, that's Kodom, that's Kodom. And, that, and I was like, okay. And that was just a word I heard all the time. And then all of a sudden, you know, when people started coming in, like, that's not what it means. And I started reading it. And I was like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's not Kodom in it. No. I don't, <laughs> think any, I don't think any of that stuff is. Yeah. No. Anyway. Um, okay. So I wanted to ask <clears throat> some questions from the chat. Uh, our friend Ryan Cox asked, um, so how often would you offer water to those rosy bows? Like four days a week? I mean, I, I mean, my experience with them isn't like super, I don't know. I can't think of really a word because I've drank too many of these, but, uh, like, it's not like vast knowledge, but like maybe, I don't know, like once a week I'd put the water bowl in, mm. I guess, and just let them drink okay. and then be good. Cause I think it like doesn't rain almost at all where most of them come from. I just realized that like with mine and when they were regurging, I asked about it and I was like, why are my rosy bow is, you know, puking? Because I mean, they were look totally fine. I mean, the, those snakes are so solid and hardcore that like I, if you killed a rosy boa, <sighs> You should just not keep a snake ever again. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, I mean, those things are they're they're tough, man. So, but I don't know, like once a week, every couple of days. I mean, like if you're gonna go feed it, uh, I would take it out like the night before, and I would let it digest for a couple of days before I put it back in. Sorry, I'm trying to talk into her ear while we're doing this so because because Randall Berry was like talk about hot springs and we oh. were literally just about it's my next to go question into that. but he said okay. he has to go so i feel bad no, no, so no, 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 randall randall stay around it up. at least one sec okay but we also want to yeah. put a thing in randall come on the podcast <laughs> randall, come on the podcast we want to have you on in the future well randall so, doesn't have adhd so it won't be as bad um but yes now and, okay and, and vast, hot, yeah hot spring anyway, yeah, hot springs. We're gonna we're gonna build a place called Reptile Garden, and that was Dennis McGee and Randall Berry's idea. And you know, from the layout and everything, it looks you know as long as it's built, which it's gonna get built. I mean, it's gonna be amazing, and it's gonna be a real like family environment for. I mean, because it's gonna be Randall there as the curator, Graham Battison as the. God, <laughs> assistant, sorry, <laughs> assistant curator. And then like, you know, I'm going to be a keeper there. I don't know if it's a lead keeper or what, but you know, I'll be there. And then, you know, I'm sure anybody else they hire, you know, they're going to be good people and just like what they want to do with the layout and the stuff they want to keep it. I mean, it's, it's going to be amazing. And I, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. Is this something you've like, kind of always wanted to do or yeah how do you come into the mix just in general i'm just good at keeping snakes and <laughs> I'm, I'm friends with randall and randall's like hey man <laughs> he's like you know you're good with you're good with snakes and you know blah 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 and he's like do you want to come he's like you want to come work with me and uh you know and i'm really good friends with graham as well 
Um, and was, he's a short tail brother. So, you know, both those guys wanted me to work there with them. And, you know, I get to work with reptiles all day and be around my friends. It was pretty awesome. So, so is this how... a uh, hmm. No, you didn't answer my other question. Is this something you've always wanted to do, or you're just like, oh, it uh, sounds cool, or like? Uh, I just, I just love snakes and reptiles. <laughs> I mean, it's there's gonna be a place where I can go to work and take care of them all day. That's pretty awesome to me. You know, I'll just have to, uh, you know, just put, get out of the snake breeder mode when people ask me questions and just go into the teaching mode instead of being like, you know. Yeah, no thumbs up at the reptile garden. No, 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 no. I wouldn't do that. It'd be like, hmm. <laughs> I, I, seriously, I mean, like, I hope that, like, one, you know, like in a Tinley, you, you'll see. I can bend the table, just sit there with me, or you guys vend a couple more shows. You already got, you got a taste. You'll see. Yeah. At least you're not in the South anymore. Oh, I love the South. You're no, in the no, South. No, 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 I mean for vending shows. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's where you get in Cletus. Bars, bars that. Yeah. So, Hot Springs, do you know why that location? Like, how is there a guy in the well, UK but, involved in this and all that? <laughs> like, well, well, the, well, Graham, you know, Graham is, uh, I mean, he, I'm friends with him too, but he, he and Randall are buddies. Graham is a very good, knowledgeable keeper. He's a great guy, good friend. Um, you know, him coming over here with his knowledge and experience will be great. And the type of keeper he is, because I mean, there's just several different types of keepers and he's like, you know, he's going to be serious and get a good, you know, do the job the right way. Um, it just, he just so happens to live in England, but, um, you know, the hot springs in general is because Arkansas, I mean, you probably see all like the Arkansas jokes on Facebook. I mean, Arkansas is Arkansas, but hot springs is like the tourist area of central Arkansas. You know, we have spas here and like, at least in hot springs we do. So hot springs is where if people do come to tour Arkansas, they usually go to hot springs. You know, and it's it's going to be basically like right in the center of the city, so it's like a great spot for it. And uh, I mean, it's a beautiful design. You know, I really think they'll do well. I mean, just kind of like with Reptile Gardens up in South Dakota, you know, they have it right on. Like you, to drive to Mount Rushmore, you have to drive past Reptile Gardens. That's genius. Yeah. That's genius because you know, like even you know, parents that don't give a crap about reptiles or whatever drive my kids like, oh man, there's snakes and gators over there, Dad. You know, and they just want to go to Mount Rushmore, but they'll be like, oh my God, we'll shut the kid up and they'll go over there. It's genius. So is like the town behind it or how did, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They already got how like, did you? Uh, how does this happen? I mean, just how does this get done? Um, uh, I mean, it was Dennis's idea and, you know, Randall's idea. You know, I just, I don't know, man. I'm just. <laughs> Ryan yeah, I feel like we need to ask Randall some yeah, more questions. Yeah, you need to ask Randall about it because like, <laughs> Randall be like, Ryan, I need you to do this, this, and this, and this. <laughs> cool man i got you i'll take care of it so like, will this now be your your full-time job yeah eventually absolutely and i'll just do the military gig on the side but uh yeah i can't and now wait, you were you know because hmm? now obviously you're gonna have probably things like monitors lizards all types all of kinds animals. of awesome i mean like i don't i mean i've experienced with you know chelonians you know, obviously you know turtles and tortoise and stuff lizards non-venomous snakes all that but you know like i told randall when he's talking to me and he offered me to you know the job to work with them i told him i was like look man i have like next to no experience with crocodilians i mean but i learn and i pay attention because i care and i really want to learn um you know i'm not like a fearless you know i'm not steve Irwin gonna jump on crocs and shit i mean that they that's one reptile that like you know I mean, they're amazing. I like looking at them or whatever, but like messing with them, I mean, they, you know, kind of, eh, but I will, and I want to learn, but I also told Randall, you know, even though I've never worked with venomous snakes, you know, I would like him to mentor me or Dennis or whoever, show me what to do and show me how to do it. And I can do it. I mean, I can read snake body language and I know, you know, I, I pay a lot of attention to the animals and I just don't mess with venomous snakes because I didn't, you know. I just had a feeling that I would get, I'd do something stupid 
and get bit. You know, be like, oh, you know, show go to show somebody like, oh yeah, there's a tangerine Hondo in here, and I pull it open and it's like, oh no, it's the Cobra. And, you know, that's what I was. I was always worried about that happen, even though I would have it labeled. I just know that like I'd be drinking too many of these. And uh, I'd be doing one of my little ADHD moments and I'd be like rifling through the tubs and I'd be like, oh no, that's the Cobra tub. That's why I don't understand how people mix their personal collection with stuff like that. I mean, people have personal collection of Venomous because we are so haphazard and it's kind of our way to stop thinking about yeah. other things is like we take care of our animals and play with our animals or, you know. So it's like with that, you always have to be on. It's not mm -hmm. that you kind of get away from the world the way we do it with our non-venomous snakes. Like you have to be clear headed. You need to do everything correctly. Well, Oh, absolutely. And like, if, if you watch the venom interviews, I don't know if you ever watched that Randall's in that, mm -hmm. um, you know, that place in Florida that does like that amazing work. Well, the, the one chick, like the Brazilian chick or whatever, they had that, uh, they had a tub that had a Honduran milk snake in it. And it had been in that tub forever. Well, I guess somebody moved around tubs or something because the story was in the venom interview. She was telling it. And like they moved that milk snake and I guess they had put a lance head in there or something. And she went to show somebody that milk snake, but there was like a lance head or something super venomous in there. And when she opened the tub, feed response had bit her right in the hand and it jacked her all up. You know, and th this is a professional keeper. It just by somebody you know, just like a normal day life communication, you know, somebody moved snakes around and didn't say anything. And then, you know, that happened. You know, just like the other bite she said she took, she was just gardening in her house and like a coral snake in the, in her garden bit her. That's random. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. And I mean, Randall just said 99% of his collections venomous. So I have a feeling yeah. Oh, that you have someone to learn from. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Like I, he had a species, he has a species in there that I'd never seen before. And I didn't even know existed there. I don't remember the scientific name, which bothers me, but, uh, they're, they're zebra, they're, they're zebra spitting cobras. I didn't know what they were. Like I went to his house and I like, you know, I was looking around his setup and I was like, Oh man, what are those? Like, I didn't know what they were. Cause they're smaller. At least his are, you know, the small snakes, but they look like a black headed python, but it's a cobra. And I was like, oh, man, what is that? And then I looked at it, and he was telling me, you know, because he has a scientific name on it, but I didn't know what that was. And he's like, oh, those are zebra spitting cobras. I was like, oh, my God, those are amazing. I'd never seen those before. I mean, that, that, that's, what, that's, a, that's one thing about snake keeping that's cool to me is, like, even though I've been doing this a long time and I've kept a lot of species and I have a lot of friends that keep a lot of species, like, I like when I go to somebody's house and they have something I've never seen. Cause that's awesome. I was like, man, I didn't even know those existed. And I was talking to Kara about it and she knew what they were. She's like, Oh yeah, those are amazing. And I was like, Oh wow. I didn't even know they existed. Yeah. It's well. like, if people don't realize that people think you like snakes. You kind of know everything about snakes, but people don't realize that you can spend your whole life learning about these and animals everything. Still and almost no fucking nothing right. to be no, honest. No. And, and that, see, that's another thing. And it's not a, it's not a ball thing either. It's just like people that breed just morphs of like one of the main, you know, like the core five super popular things, but like, that's all they do. And they think they're like amazing. That's why a lot of times, like that's like earlier in the show when I was like, whoop de do, you know, because it's like, you know, Oh, I made a banana Sunday split or whatever. And it's like, okay, well, do you know what this is? No. Well, wow. You suck. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, no, it's, it's almost like always learn. Different always different learn. It doesn't things. matter how long you've been doing this. There's always, always more to learn. learn. Yeah, and like, and stay humble. I mean, I joke around a lot, and I'm sarcastic or whatever else. But like, I know that you know Randall. You know, he's my friend. We're we're good. He knows that I have a lot of knowledge or whatever. But I know that Randall is a literal treasure trove of information. And I would never assume to know more than I'm just using him as, him as an example. I would never, you know, presume to know more than he does because I don't. Yeah. And that's the thing. Don't be, you know, even though I joke around a lot, like I'm not, you know, arrogant like that. Like I want, like when I meet someone like that, I want to talk their ear off. Like just, 
give me everything, man. I want to know it. That's why I love talking to Kara so much. I mean, cause like when we talk, we just, the information is just, it's amazing. Yeah. And I, I think there's only so many of those people out there and something that at least we try to do with the podcast, even though we may not be the most knowledgeable people, we're trying to get knowledgeable people on to kind of document this, the conversations that you would have with oh, those absolutely. people personally, you know, we want to be able to record that and have it, you know, well, that's a, uh, hold on real Kid thing. One sec. No, no, this is a kid I thing. Thought you... one... Yeah, one sec. Hold on. I thought there was like a wild animal. In there. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, basically 16. One sec. I was trying to kill a little fruit fly. It felt like a wild You're animal. You're killing flies. He's seeing stuff. Seeing stuff? Seeing stuff. <laughs> He's not seeing We're a mess. stuff. It's his child. Um. That's crazy. That's going to be awesome. So I like Randall wait. said, 28,000 square feet, which you I know can't about even it that. Imagine. What is that? Compare that to something real life. I don't know, like a Walmart. No, that's what I, I always, I don't that's know, what I always I don't compare it to. I always think is, like, is it bigger than a Walmart? That's what I always, I just think like your standard house is usually like know, 1500 to 2000 square feet, depending. I don't know. So like a hundred houses? Anyway. <laughs> Did you say 280 or 28,000? No, no, I have no idea. 28,000. So like 28 I I houses? Did. I'm so bad <laughs> it's like at like 28 that. houses? <laughs> it's fucking huge, basically, is what, is what the It's a Walmart is. bigger than 28 houses. <laughs> and I wonder, I guess there we go. the facility, not the land and everything. There we go. So is it going to be like an inside-outside thing? Um, I think I'm trying to remember the layout in my head, but like, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that like, I'm pretty sure there's stuff that's going to be outside. Like, I can't remember exactly. Cause like, I'm not as in tune with all the goings on that like Randall and Graham would be, you know, again, Randall, Ryan, I need you to do this, 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 and this. Cool. All I know is there will be no Borneo exhibit. He's told me that. I mean, do you times. have any say of what animals are involved, or do you know what animals are involved? Um. Oh, I mean, I'm sure that like Randall and Graham will be like, you know, they'll ask me like, "Hey, man, you know, what do you think about this?" I, I, I have no doubt, especially because they're friends. They'll be, be like, "Hey, man, what do you think about this?" Um, you know, and I'll give you know my opinion, but um. I know there's going to be a, obviously, you know, there'll be, God, this pisses me off. Um, obviously there'll be, you know, big snakes. That's, that's a given. You have to have big snakes at something like that. Um, there'll be a native section. Sorry, you just called, to you where they have a fruit fly in his eye. <laughs> Evan, the fuck? <laughs> what the hell is going on there evan flightless uh, variety yeah um i mean there'll be big snakes there's croc there's gonna be crocodilian stuff like caimans crocs gators um no doubt there'll be big tortoises uh you know big pythons and uh there'll be there will be a native section where there'll be native venomous and non-venomous uh that's that's what i know and i think I think Randall was telling me there's going to be like, it's going to be split up. Like certain sections will be split up to like, uh, like continent type stuff. Like, you know, like there'll be like an Australia section and then like an Asia section and stuff like that, where there'll be like venomous and then non-venomous also in the same area, which would be pretty neat. You know, there'll probably be like a retic and then like cobras and stuff like that. And then, um, you know, the Australian section, I'm sure there'll be some kind of taipan, um, you know, I personally would like a Colette snake to be in there. Ooh. Yeah, those are pretty freaking badass. I love those things, but uh, you know, it's kind of funny. Like, I'm not a big fan of Boega. I mean, they're, they're they're cool snakes, but like, I'm not like a like so many of my friends geek out over a mangrove snake, and I'm like, eh. I I mean, I mean, they're cool. I mean, you know, if somebody had one, I'd be like, oh, wow, that's neat. But I mean, uh, 
people just geek out over those. And I'm like, all right. And somebody had a hypo one, and I was like, that's worse than the fucking regular one. <laughs> it's like, now it's brown and yellow. <laughs> Bleh. Oh. And like, I have like literally probably one of the ugliest jungle carpets too, but I, it, he's one of those snakes. Well, it was a female, but it's, it's definitely a male. He's just a really big male. He's one of those jungles that's like, he's so ugly that he's cool looking. Like, he's so dark that it's neat, huh. if that makes sense. You know, like At least you're going that way, unless you're, if it just looks like a coastal, then you're totally fine. No, no. And the funny thing is, is like, jungles are probably, even though I had a bunch of them back in the day, and I understand why I got rid of them now, is like, they're probably like my least favorite carpet python. I mean, they're neat, but they've also, like, I hate mixing and all that stuff. Like, I don't judge, I don't care what people do. But like they're probably the most mixed carpet. Like when I see one that's like blazing highlighter yellow and black, there's diamond in that. I just I know somewhere in the line there's diamond in that. I don't care that there's diamond in that. I just it's just not my thing. I like Yeah, I think it's probably not in your best interest to mark them as pure if you want to be mm -hmm. accurate. Because I mean mm -hmm. you'll see some people post pure carpet, but or pure jungle, but you, you, no one fucking knows that for sure. No, no. Well, and I mean, I, you know, I had a talk with, and everybody that knows Rob and Amy Zirkle know that, like, know the Miss Kluber people, which they are. But like Rob and Amy, especially Rob, you know, he, I mean, his experience goes back forever. And he's like, again, he's another like Randall type where he's a treasure trove of information. And, you know, he can tell you like carpet stuff from way back in the day. You know, because he and I were talking about jungles one time and how jungles nowadays, a lot of them are pretty decent sized snakes. When they were first coming in way back in the day, jungles aren't big. They're like four to five foot, most of them. You know, but what is a big carpet? Diamond pythons are big. Ghost holes are big. Hmm. Wonder also, how people that... don't know how the fuck to feed them. People just no. shit like a ball python feed them every week. <laughs> Well, yeah, and, like, people come over to my house and, like, you know, they'll see, like, that jungle in particular. He's, like, eight years old. Well, his head is, like, that wide, but he's only, like, that big around. But even if I did want to feed him a lot, as soon as wintertime comes, he doesn't eat. Really? Which is great for me because I'd rather him not eat so I don't have to pay to feed him. But, you know, because he's just a pet. I just – I'll always keep him – because he's a cool snake, and when someone comes over and they want to handle a big carpet or whatever, I'm like, here you go. Like, that snake is not going to bite anyone. I just pull him out. I'm like, here you go. And Because uh, mostly what I keep are brettles, uh, because I you know, I like earth-toned snakes, and brettles are easily my favorite. They're definitely They're my favorite. They're as non-earth-toned as earth tone gets, though, I mean... Eh, it, it depends. I mean, they're some of mine are pretty fucking earth tone. <laughs> I mean, I have some of fours that don't look very earth tone, but like some of my like my lasic my lasic stuff or lasic stuff, they're they're pretty damn earth tone. But uh, I mean, they're I mean, it, it, it's cool. Like brittles are, and see, I'm not a huge fan of the hypo. I love the hypo look, but I the one thing I like about brittles is the dark tail. Yeah, well, the hypo kind of strips that out of it, and I'm just I, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I love stonewash, and uh, and I and I actually don't like. And I'm a striped fiend, just like Minotola. I mean, he and I both. I mean, we live and die by striped animals, but like uh, striped uh, brettles are just not because it, it striped brettles are nasty, man. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. They stripe. They they fuck up the tail. Uh, the color's weird, and it just, like, it, you know, I kind of just, like, the only morph of brittles that I really dig is the stonewash. And, I mean, those hypo stonewash are awesome, though, too. The combo, I, that was, that's actually a lot nicer than I thought they'd be. When I saw those, I was really impressed with those. I was like, okay, those are, those are pretty sweet. How many brittles do you have? <laughs> it's funny you said that, because one day Kara asked me on the phone, she's like, hey, how many brittles do you have? And I was like, I don't know. And I, and I was like, I have eight. I didn't even realize I had that many. I was like, oh shit, I have it. I started counting them and I was like, wait, I have eight Brennels Pythons. God. Do you produce them? No, that's the thing. That's what's even funnier. <laughs> I didn't produce them. I just have eight Brennels Pythons. Uh, the one I bought the one I bought from Owen 
because like I was looking, you know, all my friends went to Tenley one year and I was looking through all their photos and I saw Owen's table and he had a brettles python in the top of the tower. And I was like, I want that snake. And this is how I am. I want that snake. I'm going to contact you and buy that fucking snake. I'm not going to be like, I need to ask the wife and then disappear. Um, because she would already know. And I'd be like, Hey babe, I'm going to buy this snake. She's like, okay, whatever. And, uh, that's just how that goes. But, uh, so I hit up Owen and I bought that snake. So he made a Tenley sale without me even being a Tenley. And, uh, she's of unknown lineage, but she is like, um, she is amazing. Um, so I have her, I have a trio of a fours. One's a 2012 that I got from Colin safe. Cipher. Cipher. Yep. Bruce city reptiles. Uh, Colin's a good dude. I got that from him. I have a pair of a fours, young ones that from, from Joe Lombardo. And then I have a pair from Austin. And then I have a pair of Lasix from uh, my friends, uh, Tom and Lindsay, uh, noble reptiles. That's the one that like, uh, I don't know if you saw them, Joe, but like when I had that giant Brettles Python here for a while, that was their snake. Like when they were moving to Oklahoma, they sent all their big snakes for me to take care of. And like that Brettles female, I mean, she's huge. And Lindsay always thought she was like over eight foot. Cause I've always been like big on like, I don't think people realize how big a seven foot snake is. Mm -hmm. Cause the cage that my big, big boa is, is in is 74 inches. So it's just over seven foot. And I was like, Hmm, I, I kind of wonder. So, I mean, and that Brettles is massive. So I let her stretch out all the way across that seven foot cage. And like her head went over one corner and her tail just went over. So that snake was about seven and a half foot. But I bet you money that most people, if they saw that Brettles python, would have thought she was nine or ten foot. Hmm. It's you know, like catching a fish. Yeah. You put a couple pounds on there, put a couple feet yeah. on there. That's what everyone does. Yeah, it's you a five pound bass and it's three, it's three pounds. Yeah. It's and and I don't think people realize that carpet pythons forever were known to be you know, pretty large animals and people mm -hmm. thought that they were pushing those eight feet, especially coastals. And uh -uh. I mean, I mean, I know my jungles, like, I mean, that's basically an adult corn. It's in a 41 quart mm -hmm. tub and he's not going anywhere from there. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, nah, no not, it, 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 se seven foot. Like I think when people have a massive carpet python in captivity and they're like, Oh, this thing's nine foot or whatever, especially if it's coitus, you know, at, at Repticon, um, you know, the, most of those really massive carpet pythons are seven foot. I don't know what you're saying. Oh, nothing. <laughs> chat. Sorry, you answered oh. someone in the chat, but he's getting a snake next year. That's what I was trying to uh, tell oh. you. Sorry. Wow. Chat. Wow. Did chat. Really did you guys, uh, this one's whispering. You, I'll ask you guys. Did, well, did Ryan you guys was produce, did you guys put, well, that's not on. Uh, <laughs> Did you guys produce any, uh, it's like my favorite combo and I, I love honey corns. Like I absolutely, I think those things are just amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I want yeah, like two corn snake that I want and I don't want like, if they have heads and shit, which I already know they would like corn snakes that I would want that the wife would have no input in getting them. I was like, I would get like a pair of ambers and then honeys just cause I like the way they look. Um, because if she would pick them out, they'd be like, you know, some kind of purple or pink. Yeah, we don't snake that. do any of the purple pink stuff. But what are you talking no. about? We but, made ghosts. Yeah, yeah, no. that's purple, but it's not. It's but not but honeys purple. is like kind of, and this is no intention of mine, but honeys are like kind of what we're known. Like someone at Tinley was like, hey, you're that guy who produces honeys. And I'm like, I, I guess. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so. We did it one year. Yeah. If, how did we become those we, people? We did it one time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were the cool. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And the honeys are funny because Joe and I like two different versions. I like the big black saddle honeys, and he does right. it. Um, so we have, we have honey motley, which is, I mean, there's no black saddles, really. There's no black in it. And then we have these just like we're breeding them in the black for the black outline for the pattern so we have some pretty cool like black pattern ones but mm -hmm. we just sold the last one at at the show we were at um 
if you want to look up NJ Garter guy, he has a lot of cool garter snakes, but he just bought our last honey and it was it was one that was supposed to be a hold back, but I, I kept back three. They all happen yeah. to like I don't hold back females, at least in that project. I don't hold back females just because they're female. I would just mm. hold it back to best looking snakes and of course mm-hmm. the best looking snakes was three males so uh <laughs> so he got my third best one that i produce i still have two males that are fighting over kind of who why stays are you keeping them doesn't. both what, because you know what man the, that's funny that you say that because like i have always been of because like people would come to the house no matter what species i had and i usually had if if the male numbers weren't above or equal they were close because they'd be like, why do you have four males of this? And I'm like, I, you know, if I have the funds, if I see an amazing snake that I really want, and if it ends up being a male, you know, as long as I can afford it, and depending on how much I wanted that animal, I still buy it. I do the same thing like you did, like with holdbacks. If I produce something and like the top three are males, I mean, I'm probably only going to keep two of them and pick my least favorite out of those three, but like, I'm going to keep them. Yeah. Because they're awesome. I mean, they're going to pass those genetics. I mean, yeah, it would be better if they were a female sometimes. But, like, if it's amazing, if it's a male, I'm going to keep it. Or I'm going to buy it. You know, I'm just – that one Dan sending me, uh, the Borneo, it, it's a male. Yeah, sure, it would be cool if it's a female, but I don't care. I mean, sometimes, I mean, and I try not to have that many males. You know, I try to keep a good ratio. But at the end of the day – it's so underestimated just mm-hmm. getting the best snake and breeding it to the best snake. It just, that should be exactly best, what you're looking for. Breeding the best snake to the best snake. That should always be everyone's goal. And that just like, it drives me insane with that to where people will literally just to produce them. And, and this is what happens. This is what happens. They produce them. They're, they're, you know, and there's nothing wrong with being a nobody or whatever. That doesn't matter. We breed snakes for Christ's sakes, but we're all you know, no, nobody knows who you are. You don't do any, you don't advertise or you're, you're not out there putting your name out there. You're not talking to people, whatever. And you just breed random, ugly fucking snake to random, ugly fucking snake. And then you make really ugly snakes. And then of course people aren't kicking in your door to buy them because they suck. Obviously. Well, then they wholesale them. They send them to Triple L. Triple L moves them. They just put on their random generic name. And then they go out into the public. And then that person buys that snake because it's the cheapest snake. And then they breed it to this ugly fucking snake. And then it just keeps continuing on. So the people that actually, you know, put in the time and effort to really go after putting the best with the best, you know, I mean, even like back in the day with like, like how Kara did it with Bloods. Um, you know, going through countless amounts, or Tracy, or any of those people, like you, you go through countless amounts. She still wasn't just breeding like random ugly blood to random ugly blood. She would go through all these wild cots or whatever. She'd find this one, like the original raspberry line founder. Boom. Okay, I got this snake. Okay, I got this male. That's the best of the best. Breed them. Keep the best back. That's how you start a line. You know, yeah. just breeding random. I have a spider. I'm going to breed it to every ugly ass normal I can find. And I don't know. I mean, people are worried about selling snakes or making a name for yourself. People, I mean, some people are just trying to collect genes, but it's like, you don't realize that there are no actual shortcuts, but the best shortcut is just getting the best snakes. I mean, we've only been breeding for five years or so, but yeah, but I mean, it's, the fact that you're able to make an impact with just good looking animals, it doesn't matter yeah. how long you're doing it. The, the first thing, and I know you guys would agree, is like the first thing you should do is like, first of all, get species that you love. That you are really, that you really just fucking dig. Because if you don't, it's going to become a chore to take care of them. And if you do it just for money, you will burn the fuck out quick happens all the time find snakes that you really really love to mess with then it will matter to you i mean within reason if you're producing like tons and tons and tons but like if you produce reasonable amounts of babies and you work with something that you love it won't feel like work or a chore 
because you'll enjoy working with those animals so much. I've only sold a handful of my Borneos I produced this year, but I haven't been advertising a whole lot. And I just, they're my favorite species. So it's no big deal for me to take care of them. Uh, and that's the way that I think it should be. I don't believe everybody should, I mean, you know, I'll never tell people what they should do. I don't like hybrids, you know, but my buddy, our buddy, Ivory, he makes hybrids and he loves them, <laughs> but he's a, he's a cool dude. And I love that guy. I'd do anything for him. I think hybrids are fucking trash, but he loves them. <laughs> cool, man. But cool, man. I would never, if you want to do that, that's fine. The, the only, the only, the main reason I hate hybrids is not even the way they look. Cause some of them are kind of cool looking. Real cool. Yeah. The, 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 the problem is, is that, okay, you take a responsible person, you know, Facebook posts aside, Ryan's a responsible guy. So Ryan breeding those animals, Ryan's going to tell people exactly what they are. You know, I bred a matrix blood or an ivory blood to this ball python or whatever he did to make a certain more. And I'm just using him for example, because we were both friends with him. Okay. Ryan's going to tell them and that's, that's the way, and that's going to be honest. But this is what happens so many times with hybrids, but as they start trickling down and they start getting bred more and more and more into one of the other species and they start to look more like that other animal, then people are like, eh, I'm going to call this a striped matrix blood, <laughs> but it has ball python in it, but we'll just leave that little tidbit out. And then, you know, so then somebody's got mixed blood animal in there. It's kind of like with corns breeding. Okay. Like an emery rat snake. This is my opinion. Corbett people, you can burn me the steak if you want, whatever. Emery rats look nothing like corn snakes. In my opinion, if you really look at them, you really look at them just like an Eastern milk. It's like, it's no, like a corn. Wow. Okay. Wow. You're getting, I'm sorry, it. getting I'm really... heated up. Calm down. Calm no, down. Okay. Well, no, because, <laughs> because that's like saying, saying an emery so is yelling. a corn snake is like saying an Australian olive is a Papuan olive, oh, you know, a Papuan python. Hate people say that. I hate when people, people get because like... Papuans have that bulldog head. And I feel like emery's kind of have a fat head too. in compared to a corn snake, when the Australian olive has a nice slick head, okay. kind of like a corn snake does. I feel like those are parallels, which is just weird because I'm in a liasis. That's probably the only reason why I think yeah, that way. Exactly. I mean, if, if you look at it, and it's just like, okay, if you look like a, an emery rat snake, it, it, to me, it looks nothing like a corn snake. Just like, okay, like if I was in Kansas herping or whatever where emery rats are, and I caught an emery rat, especially if it was an area that overlapped, I wouldn't be like, I would not get the two confused. Like if I caught a corn snake in one County and then I caught an emery in another County, I wouldn't be like, Oh, wow, this is the same thing. It, it's to me anyway, I think, I think people would justify things to uh, meet their own means. If that makes sense. Um, you know, like, no, 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 that's the same thing. Like when they argue or whatever, but eh, it's not really not. You look at the quote unquote orange head Sumatrans, the Curtis, and they're not really, I, I don't really know the orange head thing because most they're adults I see have a yellow them. head. Those snakes, I bet, I will bet money. Those are not the same species as the black Curtis. There's no fucking way those are the same snake because the yellowhead or orange head Curtis are in the north of the island of Sumatra. The blacks are all the way down in the south, and there's a big size difference. Those ones up north don't get it big like the black Curtis, because I know, and I know you have them, Joe. They, they don't get nearly the same size. The color palette is not even close, and there's so much differences. But, you know, and if you take like a cow king and a splendida, I mean, they're very similar, but they're different. They're completely different. And I just, you know, I think the problem is with pythons in particular, because a lot of those places are not very easy to get to and do research on, you know, like with the scrubs and other, some of those other animals. I bet if someone is able to really do a ton of research, they would find out that a lot of this stuff is 100% completely different. 
We'll have Hoser check it out, and he'll read. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, that guy. Hey, buddy, I got a hunch, but uh, I mean, but but Eastern, there's Eastern rat snakes, which are apparently black rats, yellow rat, Everglades rat. I mean, we experience the same thing, and that's within the United States. It's within they, right in our backyard. They keep fucking with rat snakes, and that just drives me insane. It's like you know, for so long as a laugh and then they started calling stuff panther rufus and then you know it was obsoletus and now it's whatever the fuck it is which i'll never call it whatever they changed it to um but then when they started you know you cannot group a black with a yellow they're not even close to the same thing even a gray rat you go into mississippi okay if i go and catch a black rat you know in my county pulaski county Okay, normally our black rats in Pulaski County are very, very dark black. I catch that snake, I go down to you know, Paris, Mississippi, where my friends live, and I catch a gray rat. They don't look anywhere near the same. Like, they look completely different. So them just, like, I just think that's lazy, just to pile all that together. I just think it's lazy. I think they did it just because somebody asked them to and probably got paid money. I care some grant money, go do some, go do some work or whatever. So if I had to guess, that's probably what happened there. Cause why would you change that? That, that makes no sense. Black rat snakes are probably besides cottonmouths are probably the most common North American species. Well, I don't know. Pitch of is Starters well, and bull snakes. And, you know. eh, bull snakes are, they have a pretty big range, but yeah. Well, garter snakes. Yeah. They, they're everywhere. Even the dude, it's like the northern water snake. You'll find northern waters, whether people want to believe it or not, in Texas. Yeah, and, oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, at least from here. visual appearance, uh, mm-hmm. they are every bit a northern water snake, but they are very far from the north. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I mean, people like one the the picture I probably get the most, and it's it's during the summer when my friends are going out, and these aren't the snake friends. And they're like, "Oh man, what's this?" It's almost always a diamondback water snake. Cause you know how they look, you know, just the way they look, they look like they would be dangerous, but they're not obviously. They're thick bodied with that. But they're, they're thick bodied. They got a weird pattern, but it's always so obvious when it's an erudia. I mean, you see it right away and you're like, it's a water snake, but you know, and the diamondbacks have that, you know, that cryptic pattern in them in particular and people will be like, Oh man, what is that? I was like, it's a diamondback water snake. They're all over Arkansas. And they're like, well, is it gonna do anything? I'm like, no, just leave it alone. Just leave it the fuck alone. That that's whether it's a copperhead or not, just leave the snake alone. It's not going to chase you. It's r- literally gonna sit there, and if it moves, it's gonna go that way. Just leave yeah. it alone. And I mean, have you gotten opportunity to go herping in Arkansas or oh, do you yeah. go herping? Oh yeah, I, I go all the time. Whenever I can, anyway. You know, with with a big snake collection work and family. I mean, it's not easy, but like I try, I do try to go. What yeah. are the collection laws as far as Arkansas, if you know? Uh, they're still trying to change all that kind of stuff. You know, I don't know 100% what they really are right now, but they're trying to change it. Like I know myself and a few other keepers spoke at their little meeting they had. And, you know, they're trying to whitelist certain species where you wouldn't have a perm you wouldn't need a permit to breed them like the common stuff and their so first list was species well na- native they're kind of and that's mainly because you know kelly Irwin, the the state herpetologist like he really really cares about native species which i totally understand that respect that um you know but i may or may not have back in the day Remember, may or may not have, depending on who watches this. <laughs> I may or may not have used to breed black rats and whole brook eye, speckled kings, and caligaster, prairie kings. Mm-hmm. Uh, I may I may or may not have used to breed those animals and then release their offspring where I caught the adults. But, you know, because you're you, back in the day, you're only supposed to keep six of a certain species local. So... I would field collect certain animals and, you know, if I, but I breed them, I would just release the babies back to where I caught the adults. And most of the time I would release the adults. Eventually I would just keep them for a while. And then I just 
let him go exactly where I caught him. Um, most of the time it was like an abandoned farms and stuff like that. That's like a, like if, if you field herp and you're just driving down a road and you see like a place that looks like you would need a tetanus shot, you like definitely will find snakes in there. Like especially rat snakes. rat snakes will be in there. Like, I mean, I mean, be stepping on them. I mean, they're especially black rats and you being in Pennsylvania now, like, Oh my God, you're, you're in a treasure trove. Like you be, and if you go further up, like, like, well, I don't remember where Phil- Philadelphia is South Pennsylvania in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like you go for, I mean, man, you, you got, you got coastal milks, you got, uh, Eastern milks, black rats, uh, timbers, uh, God, you guys got all kinds of awesome stuff up there. Yeah, we're gonna do a uh, timber. We're gonna go to a den site in the spring. Oh. I believe. Not we. Who's it's we? me. <laughs> it's me. Not we. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we got a guy. This we happen. And who's Melissa, this? I don't Melissa know. said, <laughs> "Have fun." Yeah, there's no we in this. And oh, I would yeah, try wow. to go over to the Pine Barrens and see, you know, oh, pines. Yes. And... Absolutely. The like northern pines. I, I love pine snakes because they are the ultimate resting bitch face animals. They are the like they. No, not even they, resting bitch face. Just bitches. Active. Yeah. <laughs> active are, bitches. Like I love Pichuelva so much. Pichuelva side. God, and you get into all the Mexican stuff like the Depai and John I and all that. They are just. And those can be some big animals, but the the red that can come in on that animal <sighs> is just. I, I love it, man. Like, cause the same thing, uh, same reason I love a uh, Mullendorfi. I love how red they head. have that, that body color and then they like their head. They have like that reddish head. And that's why what I like that? the Mexican pines. So that's the thousand flower rat snake. You've seen that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, those are uh, so, God, I love those so much. It's like multiple animals in one. It's it is. A, it's, a it, it's like three snakes in the one. That's yeah. <laughs> the, the, the wife loves, uh, her taste is hilarious because she likes ball pythons, corn snakes, but then she likes chondros, beauty snakes. So she'll like, she likes like the two most common species. Well, and then leopard geckos too, but then she likes like the really rare stuff too. But she doesn't know that it's rare. Like when I first take, took her to Arlington, um, God, it was almost six years ago. She's like, oh, you guys have like a snake underground. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> She's like, I didn't even know this existed. I was like, well, babe, most people don't if they're not into a hobby. Yeah. I'm sure there's like stamp collector meetings or whatever. Everywhere, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, that that one Arlington that that I bought that motley at that you guys were at in seventeen, like next door, they had like some kind of wedding thing to where like I knew that because I was standing out back and like all these random people were walking out. And I'm like those aren't snake people what are they doing here and, but they were going in like you could buy like wedding supply stuff because i asked them because i'm obviously not a shy person i was like hey what are y'all doing in there and they're like oh there's like a wedding show i was like what's a wedding show oh they're oh they're amazing they're called expos oh, just like <laughs> yeah, it's a wedding expo and like all these gals are like oh it's a wedding expo i was like uh Oh, what? So and I'm sitting there thinking that's weird when I'm at a fucking <laughs> for like snakes and like I think these people are weird for like wanting like flower bouquets and everything and I'm in an expo with pythons and snakes in it like, yeah. that's well, better Melissa's... than one wait no one year or one Arlington I don't remember what it was we're rolling Ryan on in his uh, wheelchair and we turn like the wrong <sighs> way and we end up walking to like a Jesus thing, and oh, like yeah. no Ryan Sullivan, he is not the person to no. walk into. No. As far as he <laughs> burst into flames, no, we we quickly made injury. fun of a poor middle aged woman and turned around. You were so bad, but it was just like so funny. Like, oh, not the snake <laughs> area. I think we're trying to find the auction, like whatever room the auction was in or something. <laughs> and like, <laughs> Well, and also like talking about his wife, like you, one of your favorite snakes is Mandarin rats. Oh, um, yes. But it's like for us, like we don't really keep that way as far as, you mm-hmm. know, I don't keep many things like room temperature. Mm-hmm. And it's like they are kind of a rare snake, but it's like you stumble across those and that's what you're into. Well, it, it's partially with those is just because like they just don't it, all the imports that were coming in back in the day they just like they would die 
food market animals because they were just treated so terrible because i mean because they're pretty hardy as far as long as heat heat as long as you get them hot like all my mandarins that i had like i mean they're they're hardy snakes just don't get them hot um you know they ate like fiends i mean they're a rat snake i mean that's one thing i always loved about rat snakes half of them are assholes so they're going to eat anyway and then you know they're just eating machines um but like mandarins are you know even the ones that are bred you know in captivity like they don't have big clutches mm -hmm. so you know and then you get a guy like you know like uh ralph polinski who breeds a lot of mandarins well he he keeps a lot but he also has locality specific just like matthew most does so they got some really nice stuff because like there's a there's a guy in california or whatever he's he has the albino i'm not a big albino anything fan Especially yeah, a fucking know. Mandarin, dude. It's already the best looking fucking snake. How dare yeah, it you? Ruins it. So mad today, no, 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 it ruins it. No, 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 so no, no. It's fine. And unless the unless you're worried about the viewers, like I like. I, I do like the albino fire. blackhead, though. I like the oh, albino. Oh no, that's no, that's cool. No, that's cool. <laughs> I do like that. No, but I, I like mean, both. I like, I'll take both. I, I like the exanthic um, Mandarin because black and white. I mean that that's cool. But um, I like the Vietnamese mandarins because those are the ones that get really big. Like they can get, I think, over six foot. And like the, I think the 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 Sesh, God, I've had too many beers to pronounce this. The Szechuan or whatever Chinese locality, the, uh, those get pretty decent size too. I mean, mine were all my bigger ones were like three foot at most. But and then when you get ones that have like the red in them, oh. Yep, see? That one has black in it. <laughs> it's a tiger carpet. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, um, yeah, that's, you know, I, but you know one thing I haven't, like, I like their price has been pretty consistent, though. Oh, like, yeah, if you got into me. them and were consistent about it, like, you got your feed bill covered mm -hmm. i mean i mean oh yeah depending on i don't know how many animals drop dead that's the whole thing about like rare snakes you don't know mm -hmm. exactly how that goes man, about uh, i man i could only imagine because like uh, so many of those asian rats i mean coming over here because i mean they'll, they'll get dehydrated easily and you know just like you know there's not a lot of real estate to those animals as far as like you know size mm -hmm. so it's just i mean who knows man I mean, one species, like if I were you guys, you know, just my taste anyway, like I like Kaima Kafora, you know, the Japanese, especially the Kunashiri Island, Kunashiri Island ones uh, with the blue and the turquoise in them. Those are one of my favorite snakes, but uh, rhino rats, I know they're kind of trendy nowadays, but those are long been awesome. Um, I still want again. barons opposite side of the world, oh, but same thing, yeah. man. I want some blues yeah. and uh, some greens. I'll take them both. Baron's racers are amazing. Uh, God, what else? Have you seen the the high yellow mandarins? I only saw those I, recently, I, but one of the best ones I've ever seen in my life was at the Fort Worth Zoo, and this snake was like I actually had it as my cover photo for a while. I mean, it almost looked like a hypomelanistic. It was so insanely yellow, and uh, it's like the only one that I've seen in person. Um. But, you know, because like a lot of the mandarins that I've seen in person or, you know, in photos for the most part of this Szechuan locality, the Chinese, the ones that have like varying amounts of red, which I'm not really a huge fan of. I don't mind it, but, you know, I kind of like the, the ones without the red. And Gray, black, crazy. and yellow is a little bit that, more that's appealing. It. Like it, it's mandarin rat snakes have to be like one of the top five naturally occurring snakes that's just amazing them ridley eye mullendorf eye oh, you know, like the like the white dwelling thing. rats man. oh yeah the, the the wife calls uh ridley eye rainbow snakes <laughs> remember babe the ridley eye rainbow snakes <laughs> she's sick that, that, she that's another snake who <laughs> gives you like multiple snakes in one yeah <laughs> Uh, sorry, this this is my wife. Anyway, <laughs> she's uh, over there. Cats over here. But uh, yeah, that's that's one thing I I I love about those. Man, you get like the yellow, and then you get the blue, and then you get like 
all the I don't know purple as a whole yeah. are just amazing. Yeah. Uh, blue beauties, especially like the ones that are like that real cobalt blue or the in that gray, because you know some blues can have the greenish yellow tinge to them, which I'm not a big fan of. The I mean I like them all, but like I like the ones that are that real steel blue and gray. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones I like because like beauty snakes are just, I don't know. I don't know how anybody could, if you're into snakes or just kind of into snakes, I don't know how anybody couldn't see a beauty snake and be like, wow, that's awesome. It's called a fucking beauty snake. I, I, I just don't <laughs> want to deal with it. I mean, it's in the name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know how anybody couldn't like those. I mean, they're, they're so awesome. And you breed them, their eggs feel like chicken eggs. It's so uh, different. Yeah, they're not leathery. They're, they're kind of like, yeah, they're they're kind of hard. And when they actually lay, instead of like most colubrids where they just lay them and like fuck you, like they'll lay them and kind of wrap around them almost like a python. Yeah, it's pretty That's neat. Pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I like uh, the the red tails too, but I never really mess with them much. The Ganyasoma, the the red tail greens. Yeah, I don't really have the balls to. Uh, I've oh, yeah, heard too many dicks. things. Well, see, all those, well no, all those and also bigger... I've heard, you know, they're all imports at this point. They, I mean, even are, still, yeah. man. Most of them, yeah. There's only a few people that really produce them, and it, it even still. I mean, a lot of people, you know, they'll tell you, oh, yeah, I produce those. I'm like, yeah, you're so full of shit. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't produce those. Yeah. Well, so, Melissa's looking at me because, like, we went way over time. Oh, yeah, no, it's cool. I, I figured we were because, like, we just kept talking. And I was like, most of the shows I watched are, like, two hours. Yes. <laughs> Some of us have to wake up early in the morning. Yeah. Yep, Not sorry, on. guys. Mm -hmm. Well. All right. All right, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, forgot how we end the show for a second. Ryan, how can people contact you? Facebook. Don't say anything stupid. I'll send you a giant thumb. Um, that's pretty much it right now. Just Ryan Rumley. No Facebook. other page. That's it. Yeah, don't send my wife a friend request. She'll be like, who the fuck is this? Why do your friends send me friend requests? So, yeah, <laughs> just send me just send me one. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the Arkansas thing I was trying to get, I need some Slowinski eye from Arkansas. I... I don't think anyone in the hobby has Pantherophis Lewinskii from Arkansas. So uh, if you could. What the, what the hell is a. Yeah, you're going to have to Google it. What the hell is that? I'm going to have to send you a blue thumb, man. Well, the Do other it. name for it that James Lewis did on you. Give us what the other name is. What, for Slowinskii? Oh, yeah. it's Slowinski's corn snake. I don't know. It's Slowinski eye. Yeah, it's, it's See, he, people call it Kasachis, but it's not. I don't it's know if you know oh, that. Oh, 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 oh the old corn snake thing. The Kasachi corns. That's yeah, yeah, about. but. Oh. but... Solinsky. <laughs> oh, now that I get that, that's, that's funny. But it's like I they don't, don't, people don't recognize. I don't know. People thought they were like in a hybrid of a gray rat or a. Uh, no, and then Emery, so but hey, but I think there's great a small. Outro. Okay, yeah, sorry, I started this. What do you think? <laughs> if anyone wants to reach us, obviously, if you're watching this right now, you know we have a YouTube channel. If you're listening to this on the downloads, you know Port City Pythons and are from the Ground Up podcast. But if you don't know, we have an Instagram that's Port City Pythons and Facebook Port City Pythons, and our website PortCityPythons.com. If you want to email us, be portcitypythons at gmail.com. We it. will see you next Man, Monday. Later. Um, or Later. we might be doing a special show. Yeah, we, yeah. We're going to do a, a good uh, reptile show update type of thing. Okay. A small little extra bonus podcast. Yeah, an extra boner. It's not weekend. what I said, but okay. Thank you guys for listening. Thank, Thank you, you, Ryan. Ryan. All right, guys. And we'll see everyone later. Later, everyone.